We're running Tomb of Annihilation, where there's a death curse affecting everyone in the world of Zen. And we have the Curse Crushers. They came to a place called <laughs> Chult to figure out what the hell is going on. And they just got themselves an awesome airship called... What is it called, guys? <laughs> Would you guys want to rename it? Yeah, it's called the Goblin Eaters. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. That's racist. <laughs> I don't think we came up with a name for it yet, did we? No, uh, I'm just. Let's just. I got. Just... Oh, good. Do y'all want to yeah. come up with a name now? I don't think we need to do it right now. But I was gonna say we could just call it ship for now. Yeah, it's <laughs> called <laughs> the Emerald Eye. It, or it was called the Emerald Eye. You guys killed a captain for it. Mm -hmm. oh. You guys are brutal killers in D and D, right. no less. What would your mom think of you now? Uh, she would I wouldn't tell her. her. She's dumb. Um, <laughs> also, you were right, Oz. I could have twin cast Gus, and I could have actually killed both of those guys. I rewatched it, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" My mom would. <laughs> my mom. My character's mom would say, "Good riddance." <laughs> Do you wear like any <laughs> underwear, Rune, or you just walk around free ball as a, a centaur? I pretty much free ball it, and I smell like <laughs> crap. Uh, I, I take that every month and a half, 45 day cycles. <laughs> oh, you boy. just stink to high of heaven, right? Yep. <laughs> just smell like hay and manure. I'm a very hairy centaur. Uh, I'm an arch. I'm basically a kind of like a blood. Um, I can't even think of what, <laughs> what I am anymore. Uh, but basically, I'm, I'm like kind of the bird. Kept saying witcher, so it actually confused me now. Uh, but I'm a, a blood hunter. <laughs> and um, I'm unshaven. I'm hairy. I'm a, I'm a big centaur, weighing 600 pounds. And I basically don't care about taking baths. And I say very rude things. Ah. Very simple, right? In and out of character. <laughs> uh, in and out of character. But uh, I try to. I try not to cross certain lines. But I get pretty close. <laughs> Let's start off with Chef the Crazy Goblin next. Hello. I'm Chef Spore. I'm the chef of the lovely uh, ship. Uh, I can help out with, uh, you know, nature, healing, uh, and help you, you know, keep your tummy full. Uh, yeah, Chef Spore was a concept idea of, I wanted to do a Spore Druid, um, and based off of my cooking knowledge, I wanted to do um, something a little bit different than uh, most people do with uh, Spore Druid, so... I decided to go with more of the cooking element, and so a lot of him is inspired off of when I was a molecular food scientist. Nice. Um, what type of weapon does he wield? He rails the rain staff that is a key, and hopefully is nothing more important than the volcano, because we are all just gone crazy and trying to try to sell it off so we can get better items. Yeah, it's like a 15,000 gold piece staff, but you guys... 20,000 piece gold, 20,000 yeah, piece Apparently gold. a key, you know, and the lady from the vampire clans, you know, she wanted the vampire mercenary, she wanted it from you. But of course, you know, kids tried to get it with, but, um, you know, he broke <laughs> his foot. Why don't you tell us about yourself there, uh, lover boy? <clears throat> well, um, kid, no, not kids, it's a Nordelin, my bad. I had to change your name. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, uh is a, is a elder and male rogue. Um, he's really carefree, basically. Um, average height, nothing really, uh, spectacular, white hair, wields daggers and does some stabby stabby stuff. That's basically all he does. And, you know, he's just in it for, for the fun. He's just hey. bored. And, you know, does whatever the party kind of, he just goes with everything. Um, goes a bit crazy, tried to, like, kind of assassin screed, sneak into, um... Greta's? Yeah, sneak into Greta's, uh, like, her bedroom. She um, was pretty hot. You no, know, <laughs> you know, she was, she was pretty hot, yes. Uh, you know, he was trying to get some. She was kind of pale, turned... you know, she was a damp here, but, uh, what happened? Yeah, a damp here. It turned out, um... You know, I found it with another woman lying in bed, so um, that kind of didn't work out with what I had in mind. Um, so I had to <laughs> kind of okay. do a little, you know, run away because uh, I was then wanted. 
Um, I would say dropping from five stories and like snapping exactly your like your, your, your foot is a little more than just oh I just walked around and left. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for, for, for Rogue, he's not very stealthy. So no, no, very stealthy. <laughs> tried down, tried dumping <clears throat> down like five stories. It didn't, it didn't go that well. But you know, ended up in prison. But you know, the the guys they bailed me out. <laughs> that, that couldn't have been the first time your character's been in prison, right? <laughs> no, that wasn't the first time. Uh -huh. I'm, um, used to, I'm used to that. I wanted to bail you out because I need a drinking partner. I have no luck with women anyway. Oh yeah, no, neither do I. <laughs> I just, I just went with the flow, you know. Doesn't help that you guys went to the pirate uh, bar or whatever and made everybody throw up. <laughs> no, that was Chef and, <laughs> well, and <laughs> Chef and Scratch going at each other, throwing exactly. one more time. Odo, the magnificent paladin of Tear. <laughs> May judgment yep, be um, cast upon you. I was, uh, the idea I was thinking of my character was a, a Knight Templar when I created him. Um, so he's a human paladin. Um, we had some fun two episodes ago where he lost his favor with his god and lost some of his paladin abilities. So for a while he was a, not a well, lost some of his abilities, but um, <laughs> then we got back in favor, so we're all all as well in the world. Watch out! So. There's a boulder coming behind you. Yep, <laughs> that's uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, this has a lot of themes, uh, Sire. This has a lot of themes of like Indiana Jones, like you're in a jungle. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually had we didn't have the boulder come down on you guys quite yet. You know, that's right. we'll just say there's oh. some foreshadowing there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I think we owe Chef Spore a, a, an apology. We were uh, making fun oh. of, of uh, how he said said scimitar. scimitar. Actually, we're saying it wrong. Scimitar. I did it on uh, Google. It's scimitar. Scimitar? scimitar. Oh, my gosh. We were all saying yep. it wrong. <laughs> you know that Google slurs its own words. It's like a drunken cat. Can't say anything right. <laughs> Scratch and Vaughn. Listen. Oh, uh, my little scratch. Well, I'm the resident tall dog. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of the uh, inspirational person at the party. I like to play some music. Uh, I cast a little bit of magic. Uh, I also do our taxes. Um, <laughs> also, uh, I have this little amulet that uh, controls this twelve foot tall robot man. Say hi, Vaughn. Hello. Born doesn't like to talk much. Hello, <laughs> Master. There he is. It just takes a second. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I, I, I'm just kind of like the uh, moral, moral, moral compass of the party. Um, yeah, yeah that's moral about it. <clears throat> moral compass with a big, big ass statue following around. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys basically were heading back to the docks. You guys are right now in Port Naranzaru, which is a major port within the city of Cholt. Cholt is a flying island in the southwest part of Warren. And um, that's the continent's name. And uh, the world's name is Zin. And let's, before we finish off, Sire, why don't you tell us about yourself? Well... I'm Sire, and uh, my character is a warlock, uh, an Asimar. Uh, she is a protector Asimar, so she um, she is about six foot tall, and she has. Um, like let it roll off the tongue <laughs> yeah sorry she has uh blonde hair and green eyes and she is uh she has um black wings and she um she's kind of just go with the flow kind of person she 
she is good aligned um but she is okay with chaos um she she kind of just um she kind of just does what she can to um did she eldritch blast yes yeah, she eldritch blasts <laughs> eldritch blast <laughs> She Eldritch Blast, but she also, she's a Hexblade Warlock, so she has a rapier that's been with her since childhood. She, um, but she's kind of clamming, she, she clams up about her childhood because she doesn't like to talk about it. This is um, like an old character concept that you wanted to play, right? Yes, this is a, this is an older character concept of mine. Um, I've wanted to play it for a while, um. Uh, and um well, i'm glad you found us sire yeah and welcome so, to tomb of annihilation thank she's, you. she's the cursed crushers the, with the curse crushers the curse crushers the edge lords the outcasts the goblins and kobolds all have come together to defeat the death curse yes you guys were in port naranzaru which is a large city of about only a few thousand people, but very wealthy, controlled by the merchant lords of Cholt, who by all manners have many enchanters there making gear. You guys were decided just to get on the boat on your newfound ship, which you've commandeered, mm -hmm. AKA killed a captain <laughs> over. Pretty awesome. Um, one of the pirate captains here. The only other problem is there might be a few pirates, you know, coming out and looking for you. And you guys were just saying, hey, we want to go southwest and unlock the mystery of Chef Spore's staff. You guys got a scout. Um, what's his name? Mm. Musharib. Musharib. Musharoom. 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 <laughs> Musharoom. Mm -hmm. um, he's sure. waiting by. He's waiting by <laughs> the boat. He, he's waiting by the Emerald Eye. Um, what do you do? You guys want to buy anything before we go, or what's the plan, guys? We already paid for all the food that we're going to need for the travel. For us, I don't know how much rations that the <laughs> new adventurer has. I have Hopefully. ten days worth of rations. That would be enough. Uh, so I'll, 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 lead, I'll, I'll lead everybody else's rations. I'm good. I'll lead everybody's <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then luckily I can cook, so rations are sort of like, oh, in case Chef Spore dies, we have food for a bit. Mm -hmm. Don't we have, uh, um, ser not servants, uh, henchmen? You got ten no, pirates no. on the boat, yeah. plus old Deadeye, Bob Deadeye, the guy that you guys Bob. didn't kill. He was the last guy you guys didn't kill him. He's just kind of helping running things. He just kind of serves the strongest captain. Who's the strongest captain? Can we oh. change his name to Bob the Builder? Yeah. Oh, Bob, the Bob, Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Can he's we fix it? Probably, probably scratch because he's got big ass fucking giant robot that's always falling around. You know his muscle. <laughs> <laughs> and um, or Odo because Odo's kind of like always the quiet but like stern guy. You know, walks around with a big mm. stick kind of guy. Um. <laughs> Speak off the name of the, the Lord. Yeah. That's right. See, uh, as long as we don't bump into any more female goblin queens, I think I should be very good and a holy man. Why are you still talking <laughs> about that? Like, wow. <laughs> well, because he's, because he's because he's a talker, and you know he's got a lot I'm of. I'm a off. talker, you know. I, I, th I think you you'd be a rabbit. Talk about your you rabbit. I life. think it would be a pretty forgettable experience if you want to keep bringing it up every five minutes. Um, no. that's how we got born, you know. All I had to do was bang a bitch, take her necklace, and then you got the necklace. So let me get this straight. We're gonna use your offspring as a cannon fodder for the next adventure. Is that good? Uh, yep. <laughs> oh, Literally, we're gonna stuff them in the cannons. <laughs> oh dear! So we're gonna go to the volcano, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, yes. Not sure if it's there. I'm ready to guide you there. Chef um, has to pay mushroom five gold pieces a day, 
because the merchant princes want to make sure the staff doesn't get lost into um, just the wilderness or whatever, right? So Chef wisely recruited, you know, asked the merchant princess for this guy, and of course there was a dwarf that was there, Mushroom. And he's got, he's an albino dwarf, his skin is pale, you know, he's got a little dot, like a little Hindu dot, the Eye of Vishnu. But maybe we should call it like the Eye of Vecna or something, Rune. No! <laughs> the Eye of Moradin. The Eye of Vecna. Yes. Um, he, you guys come to the boat. He's he's kind of there, you know, to the airship. And, um... Oh, who, who's the captain here? Uh, I'm uh, the chef. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. No, you are not going to be, be the captain. I'd rather Oda be the captain. Oh, no, I'd rather drink bleach and listen to you. Are. I have the biggest share of this. Wait, um, wait. How about I bought Who's you a hey, hey, it's an airship, right? So who can fly? Me. Uh, I don't. Oh, Sierra can fly. So Sierra's the captain. There you go. Oh, no! Where'd you come from? You get used to this, man. People just randomly appear and disappear. Like, uh, like so, I used to have a druid friend that I got to shit talk with <clears> all the time, and now she's gone. So I don't have anyone to shit talk with. What are you talking about? Uh, now? You're like rambling now. Rambling. Rambling. Or, or, I'm gonna put on my best Kentucky accents. Rambling, rambling. Ramble, ramble. So, uh, is Ciar the uh, a mercenary? Has she joined us already, or what's what's going on? Yeah. Hey, uh, this woman here, she says she wants to go with us uh, to check out Hakamar. Indeed. Look, uh -oh. What do you look like, Ciar? Uh, I look, I'm six feet tall. I have, um, long blonde hair and green eyes. Uh, and I have a, uh, chain shirt over, uh, a cloak of purple. Hmm, interesting. All you adventurers coming out to find out about the death cursed. Uh -huh. I don't know if it'll be in Hakamara or not. But they say you have a key of some kind. Can I see it? Uh. Chef Spore will be like, this is the key. He he jingles the uh, rain cap. It's an amazing key. The problem oh. was, is my kin went there. We were making many weapons <laughs> a long oh. time ago. What happened to them? Well, the volcano. After the War of the Gods came, the volcano became unstable. And we had did to Did it leave. erupt? Aye, it did. You know, volcanoes can hide my stink, so I, I love volcanoes. Because the is smell that's... of the sulfur, <laughs> smell of the sulfur okay. in the morning. Awesome. Is it, is it still active? Aye. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. hmm. There is a powerful weapon in there, though. It would be nice to get it out of the hands of the fire newts that took it over. Wait, fire, newts. fire newts? Fire newts. Aye. Fire newts. Can I roll nature, please? Go ahead, Chef. Fire, fire newts. Uh, what's this guy's name again? Harry Krishna Dwarf? What's his name? You can call me Musharib. But if you need to to help your small yeah. mind help me out, you can call me Mushroom. Ah, mushroom. Mush that's his name, Mushroom. Okay. Hey. Oh, Mushroom, we're gonna be best friends. I'm Chef Spore. Hey, mu oh. Mushroom, you got some oh. real mushrooms? You know, you know, I just kind of wink at him. You know, you know, some real mushrooms. And he like little <laughs> digs. He digs into his bag and he pulls out a mushroom. He's like, I, I do. Right. Um, over, no. buddy. A nineteen on nature. <laughs> He hands you one. What do you want to? What do you want to find out, uh, Chef? What are you trying to ask about? Uh, pretty much. How much do I know about fire newts? Uh, fire. They are like a subterranean species. You probably have encountered them when you lived in the underground, uh, in the underdark. And they are a lizard type of people. They are very resistant to fire. Okay, guys. So these people don't use any type of fire magic. You know, it's not a smart idea. Um, 
I mean, you could kind of figure that we're saying his fire was in the name, but thanks. Yeah. Well, some yeah. things yeah. with fire aren't fire resistant, you know. You know, there's name some one. fire mushrooms and you can cook them with fire. What the hell is a fire mushroom? It's a red mushroom. Um, Why did they ask? The, uh, Hagobagalus. The Hagobagalus is extremely poisonous, but the fire uh, mushroom is completely edible. Your words hurt me. Stop talking. Well, you asked me. And you know, I was going to be. I mean, he did. that is true. Obvious, it's a good thing to point out. <laughs> this uh, this mushrooms sound like fun. I never I, was I, able to go back to the vault, but this key that you have might be the answer to opening it up. Maybe. And well, in there is uh, Morrigan's gauntlet and the fire newts. Let us hope that they have not been able to crack the vault. What? I'll run down the boat. What key, my friend? What key? And the points over to Chef Staff's uh, rain stick. Oh yeah, that that wonderfully useless rain staff that Chef keeps using in combat. Yeah, I don't, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not useless. It has killed two people. Yeah, oh. out of fifty. Out of 50. <laughs> oh. I'm pretty sure those two people that you managed to kill with the staff is like 50% of the people you've killed total. Actually, it wasn't really the staff that killed him. Didn't he just push them off? Oh, yeah, you're right. It was the gravity <laughs> that killed them. It was the sudden stop that killed them, not your staff. So uh -oh. no, I killed seven people, two by the the count trip cost. Oh, I apologize. That's a third of what you <laughs> killed. Oh, you know what, Chef? More of a support bitch because we don't have a heal. <clears throat> now that you have this key, me? the key to the volcano, I think you should run point. What do you think? You mean like time to the bow of the ship and use them to run into the mountain? I agree. <laughs> no. Anyway, I can use the staff to make a mist, of, like make us look like a cloud, so we don't have to deal with enemies, so we have a faster travel. Well, wow! Yeah, a single idea. cloud in the sky that moves pretty quick. That that's that's inconspicuous. You know how what? smart some animals are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that question. Oh um, wait, you're a scratch. Yeah, you're as smart as a kindergartner. I bet you are between red and blue. What? I think what? I think horses are smart. <laughs> well, I mean you're smarter than most horses I've met. So yeah. That's not a horse, he's a centaur. Yeah, horses think with certain organs I mean, first. I like that all I gotta do is do this, and then yes, he is a horse. I just can't see. No, his he's head. a centaur. No, okay, no. Then doing, doing, doing this, he's a horse, and doing this, you don't exist. Wow. You know I cannot feed you, and then you have to cook for yourself again. Treat me with respect, <laughs> Mister. That's not even a threat. <laughs> I never eat what you give me. Um, when was the last time I made chicken nuggets? You, you did. Yeah, you can see yeah. this. You can see this. Aye, aye, right. Captain. Sorry, let's. Hey, Harry he's Christmas. not the captain over my dead body. <laughs> hey, Harry, Harry oh, that's all. That's let's all go. I have to do. Harry Krishna. <laughs> Harry Krishna dwarf. Let's go. Uh, all right. Let's let's pray to Vishnu and uh, let's let's move it. I feel like Oz is gonna hide like a a a an item that both Scratch and Storm are gonna touch, and it's gonna be like an item that makes people instantly fall in love. <laughs> What? Do you, have, do you have a what, what kind of potion do you have? Sorry. I really hope that does not happen. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have a I actually have a filter of love, believe it or not, because I I suck at I suck at you know at everything. So. Uh, that's one way to make two people hate each other. Hello, Buttercup. Maybe I should. Come that again, and I'll cut off your tongue. <laughs> maybe I should. Maybe I should sneak the filter of love in when scratch and. Uh, you know, um, shepherd next to each other, and so they can sort of like you know get on. <laughs> I would sooner cut off my serpent cock. Um, scratch. 
I propose an alliance to make sure that we don't fall in love. We are already in an alliance. We're working together. Well, an alliance to make sure that that party does not force us to fall in love. Oh, That's we would never impossible. do that. Everything's about love, man. I mean, Zen was in love with Guta or whatever the heck her name was. You know. You know. Uh, yeah, she was. She I'm was in love with the Goblin Queen, but I keep on uh, denying it. I like Azaka. She was a wonderful woman. I mean, I'm in love with my tail. You know, everybody's in love with something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe one day. I could give Azaka her punishment, a goblin theme punishment, and you know, have a wonderful time with Azaka. I want to go home. <laughs> I, uh, I this miss... ship is our new home. I it? miss the sewer. What did I get myself into? <laughs> you need to run. <laughs> Let's get you has, by. <clears throat> as Scratch says, you need to run the boat skims off for about 300 yards before it takes off from the bay and starts oh yeah it's too late and, oh, too late. and um, begins to fly up and it heads south and we're on the airship hovering hundreds of feet above the canopy of the jungle which you guys have hacked your way through before now it's easy to travel over miles and miles and miles of rugged terrain with ease and I linked you guys the map too, right? Mm -hmm. can, I can, map? can I cast a control weather so we have so enemies to find it's harder for enemies to find us? You know yeah, if you do sure. that we won't be able to see either, right? <clears throat> the the cat the first mate uh his name was Bob Deadeye. He says, But yeah, we just point ourselves in the right direction and we'll be fine. Uh, I'm gonna get more experience than I am, so. Uh, uh. There's not hey. like any trees or anything up here. We won't hit anything. <clears throat> hey, hey mountains Bobby. and volcanoes. Hey, Bobby. Hi. <clears throat> Other airships. You know, I would wear a blindfold before you drive. It helps you drive better. Please don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Bob. Yeah. That's your name. Bobby. Bob Dead Eye. Bobby. Bob Dead Eye. Do you know any? Do you work with carpenter tools? Uh, sure. <laughs> That's a very specific question. <laughs> 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 and Chef starts to roll over laughing. And why, is he la why is he laughing? So here's the thing, guys. We're now on our airship, and if you look, we have Port Naranzaro on the very north part of the continent of Chult. We are now flying southwest, really, um, to a place called Parakamar, where they see the, where the volcano is at. Hmm. And as we fly over there, you guys can decide if you want to go to any other place or do anything else on the airship. It's going to take us three days to get there. Okay. Cool. And uh, with Chef um, casting control weather, um, how long can you cast it for, uh, Chef? One hour, I think? It takes one hour to cast, or how long does it last for? Let me actually look up this spell. Hey, if if I'm not gonna have this staff, I'm gonna use control weather until until the sun goes down. Sure, sure. Because that's why um, what's his name wanted to keep the staff was because you could use control weather to like disguise yourself. You can actually. Which I had never thought of. You can. It's a concentration spell that lasts for eight hours. So, Chef, you begin to start to use the incantation of the staff. You start to draw the magic of it. You hear what almost sounds like raindrops, you know, and rain and the clouds begin to form around um, the ship to really obscure it. I'm gonna say it would probably create a very large, this is a, um, an eighth level spell. It takes 10 minutes to start casting it, right? But once you start casting it, 
you can start to really change the weather around you for up to eight hours, right? And basically you change it through these phases. And what happens is you basically scratch as you've kind of underestimated Chef and his power of the staff, he's able to create conjure like a giant cloud or series of clouds to obscure the ship as it travels. So it kind of blends in, but the scratch also, he's right that um, it, it creates it very difficult to see uh, anything coming though too, right? So nobody can see you, but you can't see anything right outside of it. And what um, Bob is doing is he's using like a sextant, right? Like a, some type of magnetic compass to help guide the ship to where it kind of needs to go. So that way Chef can drop the, uh, the, um, the drop the uh, the control weather spell probably at like night right so what I will do um, does anybody want to do anything before I start rolling the random encounter charts I'll just be keeping an eye out making sure we ain't uh, gonna be rammed by somebody who can see us anybody else want to say anything or do anything no, just uh, I'm gonna be cooking for people. Duh. What are you cooking? Can't cook if you're casting the spell. Can um, you? I'm gonna be making fried we got some uh, food. I'm gonna be making uh, uh, um, Corvell mushrooms with uh, some pasta and some meat sauce. Uh, you put more the pasta. More you make pasta. the mushroom and put the cheese in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the mushrooms, cheese in it. I just had some uh, of those the other day. Delicious. I'll I prefer can... Kentucky Fried Chicken, but that's fine. What's a Kentucky? <laughs> What's a Kentucky? What's a Kentucky? <laughs> Kentucky is just Kentucky is just south of Cholt with lots of chickens on it. It's a small island. Yeah. <laughs> huh. And strange, creepy men in white suits and white beards. It's full what? of infernal chicken and they yeah. taste very good. Sounds yeah, like a fever dream. Mushroom comes up to Odo and says to him, uh, we used to mine a lot of powerful metal in there in Hakamar. Hakamar? So tell Hakamar. me a little bit about these fire newts. The little fucking buggers is what they are. They taste good. They moved <laughs> in and. They're already barbecued. We couldn't get the all the good stuff out of the vaults. Before they showed up, the volcano became too hot and too violent. I asked the priestess of Ivonia why the gods cursed us. They don't have priest of Ivonia. Ah, she's the Who's goddess. She's the goddess of fire. <clears throat> She's the one who creates all the volcanoes. Hey, Harry Krishna. Oh, that's why there's a volcano on a floating island. Of course, a god did it! Aye. You know, god, god is dog spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I am impressed by your basic understanding of the English lexicon. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, while we're flying, um, how is my knowledge of that foreign language that I was studying um, because of the cookbook? Well, what I'm doing is I'm making, <laughs> I'm making three rolls, you know, per day. Um, the rolls, the first two rolls are made at disadvantage because of the obscurement of the clouds that you've created, Chef. Okay. Um, Beyond that, that's kind of what you're doing full time. You can't really like study another language or do anything else while you're doing, you're keeping the concentration of the spell up, especially if you're just trying to cook as well. You know, it takes a lot of brain, a lot of mental energy to control the weather. Sure. Okay. Um, I roll for the first day. There's no random encounter. I roll for the second day. There's also no random encounter. And the third day when we arrive to Hakamar. So we've flown all the way across the island in the course of three days almost. What do you think about that, Scratch and Odo, about traveling such vast distances so quickly? 
So I probably have best. never seen one before, so I'm probably in awe. I am so smart with my investments. Uh huh. <laughs> I should have um, this worth it. Yeah. That the range diff stick was bad. It wasn't good. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix some mutagens. That's what I'm doing. It's still bad. It's How all so? it did. All it did was make it rain. I like rain. It disguises the smell. Well, hey, I like rain too. But still. <laughs> Look, That's something that already really happens! Oh my god, you know what? I'm gonna make a tornado. Just for funsies. One day. Uh-huh. Tornado? No, not, not right now, though, right? No, no, yeah, no. Now, what, yeah, what, 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 yeah, if it did that right now, we're not around. He, he, along with everybody on the ship, would probably die. So, I hope not. Yeah, you know, one day I'm gonna make a tornado and show you wrong. One day. Oh no, tornado, scary wind. Uh, what did you say? You're gonna make some ice cream that's named Tornado? Uh, let's have some cup go with that. Let's have some ice cream. Now that'd be impressive. <laughs> you know yeah. how hard ice cream is to make? Probably, nah. yeah. Especially in a jungle. Fire concentration, which I'm using for a. Uh... Well, Hare Krishna here can tell you about hot ice cream that exists in the land of Vishnu in India. <laughs> What's in India? <laughs> Lots of Indians, I guess. Indian. Indian. What's an Indian? I don't well, know. I thought that's Someone like you, India. Hare Krishna. It's like you, Hare Krishna, man. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. He starts just like blabbering. Ah, dang it, you done broke them. Hey, you okay? You guys approach with the airship into a safe location. You guys see the eruptions of the volcano happening. And um, Harry Krishnu says that there's an entranceway over there. And that's how we enter into there. And if you want to, he can go with you or you guys can go by yourselves. They're coming with uh, us. Come uh, on. Why? Can we bring them along? Yeah. But do, do you know you might how know to fight perhaps, or Mr. Krishnu? Fire new Krishnu. shit. Uh, Are you capable of fighting? If we're able to get to the vault, maybe I could help you. I, okay. I think certainly. I mean, Zen has to be our rogue. I mean, why you guys? I don't even know anything about this dwarf with his abilities. Why would you send exactly. him? Exactly. How do you how do you fight? If you don't mind us asking. <clears throat> well, I'm a tracker. I like to mark my prey and stalk them before I kill them. You you got like a like a crossbow or a bow? Uh, anything runs? I got this trusty hand axe. Oh, oh, oh! Hand axe. Uh, whoa. Um, you can throw it. That's a course. throwing weapon. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, okay. I could yeah. throw. I could throw it in. You know, that's it, though. <laughs> yeah. So here you go. One hit wonder. Then I got gonna, my mitts. I'm Put them on. I'm gonna unsling my light crossbow and give him that with my bolts. You probably need this one, not you. Okay. Just be Much sure to give it back once we come back. Much appreciated, Captain. Of course, I, I take care of my crew. I'm a good right. captain. If we're able to make it, I see that your chef is an amazing vendor. Maybe we can make right. it our way to the vault, but if it's too hard, there's no shame in retreating. Do what we dwarves do. You just never forget, and you make it a grudge. Oh, getting there is no problem. It's you know, it's it's the it's the getting out again, I guess. Aye. Well, there's a lot of lava and things like that. Just keep in mind that the, these creatures they can live in a place like this, where you be careful. That's all I'm saying there, Zen. Oh yeah, no, of course we're you know we're always careful, right, guys? We would never get caught trying to get some. And what about <coughs> you, woman? Are you planning to stay in the back, or you want to stay near the front? Near the back. Oh man. Where should I stay? Well, should I stay in the back as well? Yeah, yeah stay with stay with her, where she can help you yeah, and you can her. help her. Just watch each other's back. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stay behind everybody. I'm gonna watch your butt. 
you you'll stay with the uh, Mr. Rune and Mr. Sayer, and uh, I guess the rest of us will be up front. Because yeah. because I'm gonna hit everything from range. <laughs> Uh, I think me and Chef will probably be in the middle, and uh, yeah. Miss, Miss, Mr. Odo and, uh, Mr. And, and Zen will probably be up front, if that's alright with everyone. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, no, so, no. I'll clear the minefield. If it comes oh, up to it, I, I can yeah. come up the, I can come up front and help you out. I, I know how to, I'm pretty handy with the shield. <laughs> but luckily me, you, and Ruin know somewhat what the, uh, well, you and Ruin know what the uh, platform looks like for the, uh, um, for the staff to be put in as a key. Yeah, I got, I got a vague image of it. Uh, I think it might have been a little bit clearer than what Rune saw, but we built basically saw the same thing. It had those statues out front, right? Yeah. So, what are we looking for exactly in the volcano, out of curiosity? <clears throat> uh, we gotta, we gotta go find that bridge, uh, with the statues across it, and I think there's a door? Yeah, but what, what's actually, what are we trying to get in the volcano is what I'm trying to yeah. say. I wasn't able to see that much in the visit. It kind of stopped working after a minute. So I don't know. Are we trying to recover some treasure? Are we trying to recover something else? Or what are we I, actually I, trying to get? The division said that that location's where we saw the death curse or some kind of hint. So maybe it's another key. I hope to God it's not, but maybe. Oh my god, if we need like multiple keys, that would be so annoying because then we would be like carrying around like very power, like very expensive things and then we have to deal with more stress. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, how if, if we need multiple keys, we're going to strand you here, Chef, so don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who's manifesting it. I'm not. <laughs> don't 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 jinx us, man. Don't jinx us. Yes, yeah, Grash, don't jinx us. What did I say? I'm just trying to interpret a stupid vision that I got from breathing in colorful gas. You breathed also, in colorful gas? That's what the blind woman in the church told me to do, so I just did it. Never oh, do yeah. that. That's probably a bad idea. So if I was a priestess and I had my pants down and I told you to go suck something, what do you suck that thing? Yeah, no, I would. I'd probably just cut you a lot. <laughs> I, I would suck something. What? <laughs> yeah, was, you suck would, at everything, Arun. I would suck anything, man. You know me, you know me. Of course you do. I'd suck anything once. I'm going to go on the early retirement. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, you could be like Hare Krishna Dwarf here. Whatever his All name right. is. Alright, let, let's, let's go. I don't want to be here anymore. You guys let's just keep going forward. I think we're going to end up in a... Uh, what happens is in uh Horny jail. What's with you in horny jail, man? Where there's no, I don't think there's any women in the volcano. You, you, you gonna use, you gonna use the dudes for something? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone goes to horny jail. I got you guys summoned <clears throat> into the battle board. Um, All right. The battle entrance board. way right. is ten feet tall. There's an arched doorway beneath a massive <clears throat> reliefs of carving of frost hammer and tongs. Two iron doors were fitted to the entrance, but one lies on the ground, completely rusted off its hinges. And the other sags so badly it appears if it could collapse at any moment. Several buildings probably stood outside the forge, but they've been reduced to foundations. And so I put you guys outside of the entrance where it leads in. I need to, to be the led game. into the game. Sure. I tried to invite you there, Scratch, but you didn't get in. Could you send me the link again to the... Failspire? Yeah. I, tr I tried it before and it didn't work. And sure. Maybe it's an old link or something. Yep, the you link one lasts for on... 24 hours, Odo. So I'm going to huh? give you the new link here. Okay. There you go. There we go. That's the Tailspire invite code to the campaign. So you'll be able to hopefully join in, Odo. And um, otherwise, I do have the, sh the stream running for you. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. That's the stream, the you wanna, to the... do you want to <laughs> join Tailspire or do you want to view it on the stream link? On the screen. Okay. Um, 
Um, let me let me link that to you, buddy. I, I can produce one mutagen per day, or is that what the basic gist of it was? What mutagens do you want to make? Because you've been traveling um, for three days, Rune. I just want to make some celerity mutagens. That's it. How many do you want to make? Uh, two. I rolled for one, but I wasn't sure. So. Uh, you make two of them. You don't need to ask. It's fine. Okay. Um, sire, you fall into the lava and die. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> on my end, on my end, it just is waiting for the adventure to begin. Does that mean I haven't been, like, invited tried, into the game? I tried to summon you. Are you in the right campaign? Because you have uh, another... to. Is it TOA? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'll try to do it again. Maybe try to restart. Yeah. Let's give it a second. When uh, let's get the scratch in here. And oh, then okay. um, let's um, the stream is up for you though, Odo. Let me just I'm trying to find the link for you, buddy. Give me a second. It's okay. It's under helpful links. Under the OBS Nit stream ninja the OBS stream link. Here, Odo. It's right here. Otherwise Scratch can use that if he's having problems for some reason. Yeah, yeah, the same uh, thing. I found it like earlier up, and it's the same thing. It's just a blank blue screen. Oh, I got to turn the screen on. I'm sorry. There you go, buddy. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Okay. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Tailspire isn't even letting me close Tailspire, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe just press space? <clears throat> no, I mean, it's on the loading screen, and i pressing the close application button and it's not closing. I so mean, I try exiting on. the prop, the uh, the thing and then try re-entering it. That's what I just said. I can't exit. Hit, it's um, not letting. Hit uh, control shift exit. That'll take you into the task manager. Control shift exit. Wait, where's exit? Or delete. The top left. Or delete. Oh, escape. Mm -hmm. Or delete. Yep. Task manager. There we go. And then Tail you'll be able to force and... close out Tailspire, right? Tailspire and task. Oh, let's just look at that. All right, now I can try it. Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to try to relaunch it. That's this weird. is what we call Dungeons and Dragons, guys. We're in a dungeon, so it's kind of important that everybody's sort of in here, you know, while we go through this dungeon. Mm -hmm. and, so, you know, sometimes the zoom control doesn't work on this thing, but that's all right. <laughs> um, how you reset the zoom stuff is you either use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out, or use the arrow key to help reshift the elevation, right? Yep. Um, one thing that you can... Uh, All right, I'm, the, I just need to get that in. But... The dwarf, though, he warned you guys, though, that this place is infested with fire nudes. And yeah. if it's too much of a problem, he says it's, there's no shame in running. We just put it into the Book of Grudges. Um, what's good against nudes? Would they eat, like, ants or something? Anybody, any, anybody got any insects? Just don't use fire. Uh, why would we use fire? What do I have here? <laughs> uh, you asked what to use. I said don't use fire. Uh, we don't know what their weaknesses is. I'm uh, guessing water. I would assume cold damage if you got it. Uh, I don't really use fire newts, so I don't know anything about them. I think Appreciate they're just... Uh, I, I don't think they have a fire attack, do they? I don't remember. <laughs> don't metagame. I, I, I don't know. Scratch or Zell doesn't know, so I definitely don't Did somebody say something about metagaming? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're not reading the metagamer, Mr. Scratch. Huh? For me? No. I will never. The dwarf says to you, Rune, such as you can ask him about Sadly, they do spit fire. You have to be careful. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. You spit fire. I have a question for you, my friend. Hi. So, did you have any spellcasters with you? Bendis. Like spellcasters, you know. Bendis. No. 
Yes, he <laughs> means benders. He means benders. Did oh. you have benders? I know. Uh. Not as powerful as you. Well, Scratch, uh, do you know how to uh, control elements a little bit? Huh? No. Cool. What? What? Uh, I will. Some spells I can absorb and then put into my skimita. Okay. And, then I, and then I can attack with that spell, adding additional damage. Okay, I, I, I don't do that. I'm a, Should we send them up to the front? Oh, yeah. No! No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I Why don't you go to the front? Why don't you go to the front? <laughs> Way front. No. Yeah. I will cook you all slop. Don't test me. We all okay. have our own food. You can't threaten us like that. That means nothing. So how the ship, by the way, how the airship works, guys, is the airship is parked away from the mountain mm -hmm. a bit, right? I want to say it's mm -hmm. probably like a good thousand yards away. You know, it, it's probably like a half a mile or something I'm thinking away. How you mm -hmm. guys get off the airship, Vorn just jumps right off. And mm -hmm. then you got to probably drop down a, a, quite a few ropes for Vorn to climb up, um, up onto the airship. But everybody else just repels off of it because the airship doesn't dock, you know, on the ground at all. Mm -hmm. Especially in the thick jungle. Cool, it's, it's like a helicopter when they hover yeah. over. It's just floating up like a blimp. Mm -hmm. How do well, we get back up? If they're going to the, the, crew, the crewmates will throw you down the ropes. Hopefully. <laughs> We're going in. We're going so who's going first? You guys get to decide your marching order and stuff. I think we have Sire and uh, Mushroom in the back. Right. Oh yeah. So oh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go first, but I uh, I don't have uh, dark vision, so I don't yeah, know I'll if you're lit in there with lava. Like I have a bullseye lantern if you want to. I'll be behind Odo and okay. um. I'll be up front with uh, Odo since I do. Have dark vision. Okay. Uh, Chef, where do you want to be? Right here, maybe? So we're kind of yeah. like doing this. And then, Rune, are you going to be in the back, kind of like this? Yeah, I'm going to do... Where do you want Vorn? Uh, uh, Vorn is going to follow behind... Uh, well, I was going to have him follow behind me, but this is too narrow of a corridor, so he's probably just going to stay in the back until he can catch up with me. Okay. So uh, how we kind of do it, guys, is... This is kind of the marching order I see. I'm going to move Odo, because he's like the point guy. He's the tank, I guess. And so I'm just going to move him up, and I'll describe. So this is somewhat theater of the mind, and some of it is we got the map. I ha The map has hidden zones in it to add more to the mystery of the place. And as Odo walks up, you see like these train tracks. It's true, Odo. You don't need dark vision in here. There's probably so much okay. lava flowing through the mountain that it makes mm -hmm. the whole area glow just like it does in the map. But there's like an intense heat. You know, ash and embers are flowing outside even of the cave a little bit. Um, Odo, you look to your right and it's just like a ton of smoke. Like it's totally okay. opaque. Like billowing smoke and some of these embers are coming from this direction. And there's like a magma, what they call a magma rift right here in front of you. And mm -hmm. I'll describe the magma rift for you, buddy. And basically how it works is we're all traveling with Odo right now. And unless I surprise you, you guys can set it up, right? And we can mm -hmm. also make stealth rolls if we want to try to sneak up to the creatures. Right? So can you guys hear me okay with the beard on? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yep. A cavern of molten, of molten magma bubbles and flames before you. The cavern walls are lined with metal gantries and cranes that support an immense crucible of scorched clay. Huge chains stretch across the cavern, apparently to shuttle the multi-ton buckets of iron ore across the lava. The heat takes your breath away, and it brings water to your eyes, and bakes your skin. From where you stand, it's only the obvious way to cross is via a narrow stone trestle built from rail carts. The sound of rhythmic hammering comes from somewhere beyond the rift. So, there's hammering Odo, 
coming from beyond the rift that you can barely hear, you know, over the sound of the volcano and the lava flowing out, right? You do hear it in the distance. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, Mush mushroom. Uh, do uh, fire newts forge or mine? Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. I'd bring some gas. Uh, control your are wind, this... centaur. <laughs> are these fire newts like? I don't really sound insensitive. Are they like sentient or are they more like monsters? The monsters. They took the over this place and they defile the dwarven. <sighs> he just starts to get worked up. Oh. Okay. Um. All right. But I, I'm I'm right behind you, Otto. So yeah, go for it whenever you're ready. Could we go left or straight? I think we should go investigate that noise first before anything. Okay. All right, let's go straight. So there's a way left, there's a way right, and a way straight. And I'll make a roll with uh, the guy, right? Okay, he says. Uh, so Do you want to walk across the bridge like this? I, do do we have to walk one abreast across the bridge? It looks like we could actually, it's probably safe to have it, because if you look at the way the bridge is made, but three people mm -hmm. could fit across the bridge. It's just pretty rough stone. Like, it's a pretty mm -hmm. large bridge, right? But you have the tracks right here. Um, and I'm just going to move you up, right? So, like, let me, let me before I move you up, Odo, I'll just describe it again. There's a, you can go left, right, or straight, and you're deciding to go straight to where the right. hammering is at, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to move you up to here, and Vorn falls in the lava and dies. Yep, and melts. <laughs> and he melts. Does he? Yet. You guys see the cranes the and stuff that they have? Mm -hmm. You guys see yeah. the cranes and the bear? This is the, the, the chains of the stuff mm -hmm. that, you know, take it across. I can't um, move my thing because Vorn is in the way. Oh, no, no, no. Use, you can also use the arrow key if someone's controlling, you know, overlapping your model. You know, you can just use the it's... left, right, and up arrow keys there. Um, I'm gonna. So basically, Odo, the sound of the hammering gets louder and louder. And if you look, there's an entrance way over here, right? And there appears to be more tracks going off this direction. What do you want to do? So there's a few few ways you can go, Odo. You can go this way. Mm -hmm. Or you can go down the tracks, maybe, and there's maybe a hallway down this way. Senior, my model. Are we? Can are we, we? Um. Are we um, stealthing? By the way, guys. No. <laughs> I don't know what if to we, go. If we are stealthing, do we? Uh, no, it's a party roll, anyways. One person fails, we all fail. So I mean, That's we could try. I I, I have a disadvantage on stealth, so. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, Vorn ain't particularly stealthy neither, but we can yeah. always try. Give ourselves see, a chance. Do you to see a fire nude the up there? I don't know that. See nothing. All clear. Uh, okay. Are we gonna wait here? Yes, we're gonna Never. wait here. We're gonna make babies. Our next generation is <laughs> gonna fight this area. Okay, you can. You can not do that. No, is that called sarcasm? Hmm. Oh, what? Right. Whatever. All right, let's, let's try to be quiet. Okay. So and how it works roll. for Vorn, how it works for Vorn, like when you're in these five foot corridors like this, he just moves at half speed and attacks with disadvantage. Okay. Yep, so are we all in agreeing, agreeing that we're trying to stealth? Yep. Yeah. Trying to stealth up. Try such as, as we may. I mean, no, gonna, no harm in trying. <laughs> we're going to try to stealth up to here, is what I'm saying. So maybe mm -hmm. Odo can look into this next room, okay? okay. Everybody makes the yeah. stealth roll. Maybe if we have more right. successes than failures, our group succeeds? 11. <laughs> 3. 
bum on you, stealth as a dump stat. Of course, you guys could send Kizro up and he could just, you know, do his own thing. 26. Guys. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah I got a 19. I'm so that's guys, three I'm gonna help stealthy chain mail. Well, one <laughs> second. But before we move up, let's move everybody back. Kizro, you guys, you make the first step, Odo, and you make like a loud fucking noise or something, right? And then you look back, Kizro, and what does Kizro say? You know, you could you could send me in front because you know I'm kind of the stealthy thing is kind of my thing. Good, good, good thought. I mean, that was kind of fucking loud. Probably already loaded whatever is in front of us. Yeah. Even though he rolled a 19 on his stealth check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still loud. But one so. time I get a good roll, but uh, anyway. Yeah. I I rolled a 25, <laughs> so I'm gonna use that. I'll be up front with Ken or Kiz. Okay. Kiz? So Kizana. I'm gonna say. I'm going to be a nice guy. Well, I'm trying to help you guys out a little bit, okay? Hey. Um, Kiz, I'm going to have, um, we'll have Scratch, and we'll have Kizro move up to here. Um, I'll make an opposing roll with these guys, right? <clears throat> and I'll show you, I'll describe what you see, right? All right. Give me a second. Ooh, secret room. So it is, <laughs> it is, as, you, as you walk up, um, Kizro, and you, you kind of are looking up here. I'm going to move you guys up to here. Like this, kind of like there. There's this giant crane here. And um, there are like, what I want to say, like you see the fire, fire newts in here. Uh, there appears to be a huge forge of some kind right? Pools of metal or they're forging in here. Lava is being poured down into a huge basin. And I'll describe the room for you. Was this one of those magma forges that you talked about? The hammering sound grows louder, but it's not coming from the chamber ahead. It's enormous. Rectangular chamber. It's a working smelter. A rectangular pit in the center of the room fills with molten iron. Six devices of dwarven design and make a rain are arranged around the pit. They siphon off the liquid metal and draw out the impurities. A smaller pool in the southeast holds in the corner what appears to be molten silver. The creatures look like a mix of humanoid amphibians and elemental fire. They are tending to the machine. So far, they haven't noticed you. Is it just that one that we can see over here? Or how do I end? So yeah. there's a huge, um, you know, there's a huge uh, smelting process happening here. Yeah. Uh, let me just take a look here. There is a, I'm trying to take a look. There is a, some doors and the hammering is actually coming off. There is a room this way, right? To the east where the hammering is coming from. And there appears to be like these fire elementals in here. Oh, these are actually, they appear to be like almost like fire elementals. That's what these guys look like. But they actually look like salamanders. I'll actually link you what they actually look like. This is the model that I'm using because um, it's the best I could find. They actually look like salamanders like this. Salamander. <laughs> All right. Uh, they must have good ACs since they have shields. Nah, they're <laughs> they're, they're salty salamanders with good scaly, a, scaly good leather a, skin. Good AC but low constitution. I mean, look at that. We could see their bones. We could yeah, we could we could strip we we'll could strip a... their fire leather and uh, equip Zen with it. What can we just <laughs> can we just have, pour water um, over them? I'm gonna have Zen and uh, Scratch make a perception roll. Perception, perception, perceiving. I'll have expertise. Of perception. <laughs> I do as well. It's like we're the I've... same person. But I rolled the net one. I didn't, so don't worry. Yeah, so much for perception. Zen's the un... You see the cave, you like, you kind of look up and you're kind of being cautious about this scratch where we bring Warren up, who's going to make a shit ton of noise. You know, just stomping around. There are a ton of these, like, huge, 
creatures. Um, they are almost like giant lizards. Um, there could be like a dozen of them. They're just all, they have ropes that appear to be uh, chaining them up against the wall. Or, you know, like, um, I'm trying to use the correct term, like, you know how the horse like stables them and they just wrap the reins around like the pole? That's what's happening here. So they're being tethered to a yes, pole? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where are they on the wall? To the left. Right to the left. I'm trying to look for it. To the and left, to the left. All right, right uh, so I... Oh, over there, in that direction. Okay. Oh, God, now I can see him. I was still in the other yeah. room. Oh. Nope, you're okay. hide the perception roll, right? You're all the 23. What are those things? Oh. Giant lizard. Giant lizard. <laughs> Very big lizard. Are you sure it's not a dragon? Shh. Shut up, back there. You're not here with us. Shut up. Shh. Okay, no. um, so big lizard that trapped up ahead and scary fire lizard thing to the right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what's behind door number three? This would be a bad time to say, hey, I need to take a bathroom break. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so then, do you think we should go back and tell them about this and just attack? Do you want us to keep sneaking ahead see if we can find something else? I don't, not be I, don't, traps in here. I don't want to like, you know, uh, kind of, I don't want them to notice us and then those giant things coming after us so we should probably go back and strategize on how we're gonna go about this you're the uh, the professional uh sneaky person so sure that's what we'll do so yeah little problem guys or uh or, or big the dinosaurs problem. Very big lizards! Dinosaurs and uh, the, like fire lizard, fire lizards. Fire lizards. Yeah, the, uh, uh, lizards the kind of like, fire. Kind of or, the kind of like orange salamanders. I think there's like four of them in the room. It, yeah. There's like a big smelting area. Like uh, they were using the lava to melt the iron. And I think there was a pool of silver. I wasn't Let's really attack. paying attention. Let's attack. What? No! What? No, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> do you, we could like you know try to pour water over those fire lizards. You no, know, maybe that's that, not gonna do like, any good. It's a volcano. What, what water? I mean, you just the, carry a bucket of water with you. It doesn't um, matter. It's not gonna do any good. It's a volcano. It's a volcano, man. It ain't gonna do no good. Okay. Well, the good news about the giant lizards are that they're chained up on the walls, so they ain't gonna be coming after us unless they break them. So as long as we're quiet. Mm -hmm. Entering the room, we should be okay. Uh, Can we try that? Ninja, got it. Thank you. All right. Now we just uh, need to be quiet going into the room. Once we're there, then y'all can go and send kill things. Just that's what y'all like to do, apparently. Okay. I also yes, just um, I, I changed some of the hidden zone here, so you guys can see a little bit too. There's like lava here, but there appears to be like a ledge over here, right? and more of these chains of iron where they move the metal to, right? Yeah. All right, well, who's I mean, going first? We could go the other way around and just, you know, kind of check everywhere else first. I'm just so saying. We can, so we can sneak back over here? That, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, get a feel for the terrain, you know, and then make a plan. Maybe blow the so, whole thing up. From what I saw, the only other direction that we could go was left from the entrance, and that looks like it just leads back to the dinosaur things. Uh, uh, I mean... Uh, the dwarf scratches his head. I don't think so. There's all kinds of caverns around here that lead to the mine. Alright. I mean, you, nope. you're, the, you're the guide, so if that's where we're going, we're going. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're just giving our opinion to it. So if you say that there's a more paths we could take, we should probably avoid combat, shouldn't we? Right? 
No, we gotta yes. kill these assholes. <laughs> oh, okay, but I thought, have you already done some stalking then? I mean, I thought that's that's what you, that's your thing, I thought. I, I, I don't know what you're gonna do, he says. I'm here to, I got my trusty crossbow the captain gave me. Yep. Not the captain. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. If you're a captain, then I'm a king. <laughs> sure. What, right, what, so, uh, what, what do you what, think? He looks over at Sire. Well, I think. Hmm. It's dangerous either way, but I think. Yeah, we're trying to take the lesser danger, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, if this other plan doesn't work, we lose the element of surprise that we currently have. We can use that to our advantage right now. That's what That's I'm saying. That's true. Oh, like right now. Yes, right now. So we're gonna attack right now. That would be the most advantageous thing to do right now, don't you think? See? You know, we all come to the same solution. Attack! <laughs> well, maybe not so much as attack, but more like attack, you know? I mean, you know, with your role, but gonna, they really haven't done attacking. anything wrong yet. They haven't attacked <laughs> us. They drew the, they drove the hey. dwarves out of their home. They're not our friends. They, yeah, they don't look like they're not going to attack us. Oh, I think fire leather would do, fire scaly leather would do wonders for some of our armor, right? You are yeah. insane. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe even some of that fire spit, you know, we can start spitting fire at our enemies. Uh, 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 is there, everybody, what are we, we need to agree on something. Are we attacking or are we going to run away again? No, let's, let's attack and then, you know, you know, maybe we can learn to you know, Spitfire and Bark Volcano. I don't know. Let's just go. Let's go kill him. We, we, with with Spore in the lead, I'm sure we'll do fine. Spore will Shh, Spore will kill them all with his rain staff. We gotta be quiet so we can get the stuff. No, Spore will kill them with his rain staff. I mean, it's he's he's the ultimate killer, right? And I talked to Donald. Hey, can we get snow in there with the 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 weather? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, he could freak cause the shit could, out of him. Yeah, he could cause a blizzard, right? <clears throat> Probably That's create true. a big, big uh, fog. Yeah, it's a better idea than a bucket of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I mean, the stack do that? You never hey. know. Maybe a bucket of water would have worked. I'm just hey, saying. It would have just. I Cause do you, water do and we'd be you have? Do you have a bucket of water? Yeah, we could look for a but like a bucket of water, you know. We could look for a, a bucket volcano. of water and a volcano. You never know what you might find. Maybe there's like a hot spring here. Maybe we can take a that nice is dip. A, that that is a massive maybe. We don't want maybes. We need certainty. We're about to go fight a bunch of fire lizards. I, 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 I'll take my chances, but all right, I'll go with whatever you guys say. I was just, you know, making suggestions. Based off of no facts. Based off uh, of what sounds fun. F f <laughs> what? Fun? fun? Our lives are in danger. <laughs> I mean, not right now, are they? <laughs> Oh if you pour water on the volcano, he's just going to create scalding water and we're going to be burned by water instead of fire. Uh, I like the idea of the snow, though. Let's, can you cause a blizzard, Mr. Goblin Chef? Are you alive uh, there? You look like I, you're half dead. It has to be natural for, for the weather to work. So, like, tornadoes work in this environment, uh, rain works in this environment. I could always do control water and throw water into the lava. Um, but that's not smart. Uh, Why not that just create like a giant wall of steam? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Well, Make that means Rune gets a really good shower. Uh, I, I guess I could use a shower, but not right now. Hmm. So, so what's the plan? So no blizzard, no nothing. We're just gonna run up and attack. 
Do you have a way to boat the blizzard? He can't. Well, uh, have to be Manu? out of that environment, and this is not a uh, a cold area. It's not a rain area either, so that's another thing that's out of the question. Hmm. Well, uh, technically, caves are kind of cold anyway, normally. Um, but I don't know. This isn't a cave. This is a volcano. It's a volcano cave. Cave uh. caves are still cold until you get to the volcano. Wait, yeah. I have a question. I have a question. With control weather, can I? Okay, I'm thinking of something really stupid. Okay, you know things called micro micro freshers, right? No. What? Okay, so micro fractures are um, like with a volcano, they have like these small little like uh, rivets and cracks, and they can like release steam or release lava. Yeah, no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> I mean, like earthquake. I mean, I mean, control weather is an eighth level spell. I'm a little surprised that you can't just turn it into a blizzard. I mean, it's a pretty bloody powerful spell. Well, it how control weather is read, it has to be. Part of the uh, part of the natural element, so like that's why I was that's why I want to make a tornado is because I can make a tornado here. But since blizzards aren't, but that's not what it, that's not what it says in the description of the spell. I mean, are you reading the spell properly? It says you can change the weather to whatever you want. It doesn't have anything about any limitations to it. It's an eighth level. You know spell. what? Then let's try to make it snow. Then fuck it. Let's try to make it snow. You're saying that the spell description says you can change the weather into whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's it says. An eight, word, it's like word for word. Yeah, word pretty much. Word. That's what it says. Okay, okay so then not... let's make it uh, six, Arctic cold. Let's make this cave as cold as fuck then. You I mean, it just takes time. As yeah. Chef begins to cast a spell, he is, he is a powerful druid, but he is kind of like uneducated, you know, and he has ruined the guy who smells like piss, shit, and hay <laughs> trying to help him out. And if you read the first sentence of the spell, it says, you must be outdoors to cast a spell. The spell fails. Damn. The first uh, we, we, sentence we are, it says, wait a minute, we must are be outdoors, outdoors in the game. To... We are, are we? outside. A volcano technically is outside. That would be <laughs> the same thing as saying that an, a house is outside. The spell uh, fails. Uh, exactly. Guys, we're taking too long. We gotta do something. Uh... All right, let's just uh, let's just try attacking them then. I'm not sure how much damage my weapons can do against like fire creatures, but let's go. I mean, if they're alive; they can bleed, right? I hope. Can they? They can. Uh, they can melt, baby. They can dis dissolve. I don't know anything about them. You know, just Aww. might as well take a chances. We don't we don't know anything about them exactly, so might as well learn about them now. Does anybody want to cast a spell on themselves before they go into? Um, before I would like initiative? to I would like to wild shape, please, and have my temporary HP. Sire, I'm just gonna move you back because you want to be in the back, right? I also yeah. put a little torch effect on you so we can see you better, All right? Put some torch effects on you guys. Um, you cast a wild shape to do the temp HP thing on you, right? Anybody else want to cast any more spells on themselves before we perhaps go into a very dangerous fight? Uh, if Odo's going first, I'm going to go ahead and give him a Bardic Inspiration Combat Inspiration. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm going to put Odo up here. And basically, you guys are marching around the corner. Uh, I think Sai rolled a three on the stealth roll. Basically, I'll move you guys up to here. This is where Odo gets before um, they start, like, they look at you and they say something in a strange language and they're alerted and we roll initiative, right? So um, I'm gonna, you guys can move your characters up to here, right? Into this area or wherever you wanna move them to up to here, right? Or if you wanna stay in the back, that's fine too. Um, I'm gonna give the dwarf, I had the dwarf, I think yeah, I put him way back here. Who, who wants to control the dwarf? I'm already controlling Vorn, so I think someone else should need to do it. 
uh, he's in it, the back. Both so, you yeah. guys will be the archers. I'm gonna give yeah, Stevo control of the dwarf. Yeah. I'm gonna give him control of mushroom. There's mushroom right there, uh, rune right next to you, buddy. He's right here. So you can yeah, control gonna... him. Where do you want to move, rune? You're way in the back right now. Yeah, I'm gonna move forward, obviously, but I'm gonna also consume the mutagen to get yep. myself uh, celerity. Where do you want to move, Zen? I will probably be staying somewhere around. So I'm in the front, so basically where I'm standing right now. Wait, that's not me. Wait, where? where You're back I? here, buddy. Oh. oh, oh, my bad. That's where I'm gonna stand. Oh, not there. There. Okay. So you're gonna stand up front like this. We got Vorn kind of in the back here. We got this guy. We're gonna have him maybe a little closer like this. We're gonna, we can't have models overlap each other's bases, so we'll have them like this. And this is kind of where, where the mark, the uh, fight, this is where the fight will begin, correct? Sure. Yeah. Zen, do you have backstab ability? Or is that something 5th edition does. doesn't have anymore? He does. Yes. You want to hide around the corner, and when they come out to get me, you backstab? Oh, sure, yeah, that sounds like a plan. I will be yeah. hiding here. Sneak attack. We're gonna have Zen uh, maybe like right here. And so as a ready to action, you're gonna actually it'll put you right here, Zen. So if someone if a fire newt does come up to here, um, you could stab it, right? It'll be your stealth versus their perception, okay? Okay. Okay, so everybody, um, I will roll initiative for you guys using your D D. There we go. We got Zen up first. Then we got Scratch. Then we got Odo. Victoria Initiative. I already rolled you. Um, Chef. Rune. Yeah. And then we got Sayar. Why don't you roll Initiative, Sayar? I don't have you, you in added, the system yet. You added the uh, extra for the decks because of the mutagen? Um, 30, 20. Okay. I got a 25 for, for Zen, by the way. Um, so I'm going to move Sire up to, and Scratch, I got a 13 for you. I actually rolled kind of low for you guys. Um, what, do you want to roll a D8 surprise. as well? Um, I rolled an 8 for you. Um, Rune, do you want to add a D8 to it because of the mutagen? No, mutagen adds just plus one because it's a 20 dex. <clears throat> okay, so you beat out Chef. Vorn goes last, and I'm going to have Mushroom go last, and Vorn goes ahead of them. But Chef was then dead last with an eight. Okay, cool. I rolled a three with the guys, but we do alternating initiative, right? So let me put out the monsters. So I labeled these monsters. This is something I'm trying to start to do more when we go into like more of these prepared settings. Oh, Which, mon one, mon two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that way it's like less metagaming, and then that way you can say, hey, I want to attack you know, this monster or whatever, right? Mon. They're all mons. Mon two. Missy hey, mon three. You should say you should put mom, mom one, mom two. Thank you, mom. <laughs> They're all moms. <laughs> hey, that's my mom. That's your mom. That's his mom. I think I'm missing. It's my mother. Mom number one, mom number yeah, it's, two. It's my mother in law. It's a mom in law. <laughs> there I right. am. I got to put another one out. What the another heck? mom. They all look like fire elementals. Am I missing something? Yeah, they look yeah, like because this is the best model. Models. Right, they didn't have a exact model. <clears throat> Could have been red dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, what? what just happened? Nothing. What just happened? You're dead. Zen is up first. All right, so we're starting combat now, right? Yep. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna throw uh, my dagger at okay. this thing over here. Which uh, one? At this one. That guy. Okay, sure. Yeah, that guy if over there. If you hit tab, you can also say mon two, right? Oh, oh, or, yeah, or mon two. two. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hit. I'm gonna hit mon two. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or you can use the M key like I like to do too. Um, so I want you to roll your stealth roll. Oh, right my now. stealth roll first. Mm -hmm. Uh, my bad. Stealth roll. That's 27. 
yeah, they're not going to be able to spot you. Um, so you get your sneak attack damage too. So you roll an a ranged attack roll with advantage. Yes, true with advantage. So I'm gonna just roll again because I already rolled once. The first one was I don't was see your a... rolls, by the way. By, by the way, buddy. Uh that's weird. I'm. It's the Tomb of Annihilation campaign, right? I'm just rolling. Yes, regularly. but your roll is probably to self instead of everyone. No, it says it's it's to everyone. Let me just refresh real quick and then check. <clears> I just roll again. Yeah, oh damn, that's a lot more than I saw. So One, two, three, like that, four. and then I'm a... That's double. Oh yeah, now I see everyone else's rolls as well. Oh, now it's loading a shit ton for me. Oh, yeah. Up. So what are you what are you doing? Are you attacking Mon? Mon I don't two? see your roll. Did you want to roll, um, Zen? I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna roll again because it no one saw it, but then I because I refreshed. I don't know why I rolled. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I see it now, buddy. Yeah, just a little awesome. glitch in your D&D, it's okay. Yeah, probably. Uh, so that's an 18. To hit, they have an AC of 13. Alright, awesome. So I'm just gonna go and do my piercing. Throwing damage. Minus it's seven. 7. As your plus... dagger strikes into him. Plus a sneak attack. Yep. Uh, which is another 11. Badly hurt from the sneak attack. Do assassins get like a bonus to creatures that haven't had a turn of combat yet? Yeah, I think he does extra damage. Yeah, he also knows yeah. The character sheet. No, no, it's because uh, of because I'm an assassin. Every monster that hasn't had it. It's turn. a critical hit, right? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Okay. Uh, and yeah, as my bonus action, I'm just gonna throw my second dagger that I have because uh, you know. All right. Just, I don't need the daggers anymore. I have show swords now. Um, Could have sworn it was it made your yes. sneak. You already, out. by the way, you score a critical hit. I'm reading it. It's called assassinate. It's a um, yeah. once you have advantage on rolls that haven't taken a the creature hasn't taken a turn yet in combat. In addition, when you score a critical hit that against a creature that is surprised, so I will say this creature is surprised. Oh, so they are surprised. Okay, so well, I thought, actually, no, they're I... not because we failed the stealth roll. Yeah, that's so what right. I thought. That's no, I'm sorry, yeah. Zen. You are right. Sorry, uh, so that's in that there. 20. That's in that 20 up, I rolled, though. Mm -hmm. well, um, dance, and that's a 9. Roll another that's... d20 to save you super crit. Alright, let's go for a super crit, guys. I'm telling you, it's the. It's the uh, back the dice. You did 9, so you hit max damage on the dice. You did how power criticals exactly. work is they roll max damage. You kill the first one with the second dagger. You, you, you know, you almost kill it with the first attack. Um, and then how do you finish it off with the second attack? Oh, I just try to aim it wherever a heart would usually be. And then kind of, I don't know what would happen because I'm, I'm just throwing it, kind of trying to pierce it. Yeah, the but sweat, you know. I'm going to say like the sweat and the, uh, you know, from the heat of this place is just incredible though, right? And like your eyes water up, and but you you squint it out a little bit, and you throw the second dagger, and it hits him right in the chest and right into his heart, and he dies. Exactly, because I'm sweating. I used the you know I used a bit of water on it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> My tactic. Do you want to move it all, or do you want to stay right here? I'll stay here. Okay. Um, Mon, these guys, Mon these guys are easy. It sees these you. These guys there, are easy. And it um, let me pull this guy up. Jumping over a little bit because I had to check out that rule. Great. Um. Okay. This of rain. This has an ability of only ten feet, so it's actually pretty short ranged. Um. He uh runs off over here, and oh, spends boy. his action over doing there. something. And oh, Sire boy. is up. He's gonna release the hounds or the lizards. Oh The no. kraken. Yeah. Sire is up. No, I was saying, oh no, he's going to release the <laughs> so You're going to release yeah. the Kraken. <laughs> Sire, what do you want to do? Welcome to the game, Sire. Uh, it's a trap. I don't know how to how to do the uh, mine thingy. So I hit the two, I hit the end key, then I hit the number two, and then I can measure it out like that, right? So you're about 50 feet away from this guy. 
or you're about 40 feet away from this guy over here. But you'd have to move up into the hallway to see him, right? No fireball. What do you want to no cast, Sire? No lost. Fire, um, fire, pants on fire. Liar, liar, pants on fire. It's still not... Do? Um, I'll move up. Don't don't worry too much about the technical things. Tell me what you want to do, and then we'll do it. Okay, I I want to um. Do you want me to come back to you? Uh, no. I I I want to hit this guy. The ah, I want to hit one of them with an eldritch blast. But this guy, yeah, that guy. This guy right here. Okay. Yeah. Roll to hit. Where is Do you want to position yourself in front of us before you no, make an attack as a case? She, she can hit him, and there's nobody in direct combat with him, so even if she rolls a natural one, it's not a problem. Uh, where is All right. oh. A hundred million years. She's also a new player, guys. We can't be that hard on her. I just didn't want to get shot. Remember, I gave everybody <clears throat> inspiration, too, from... A Christmas uh, gift, so feel free to use your inspirations if you want to. Your Christmas inspiration. Sire, roll an attack roll with Eldritch Blast. There you go. I'm going to use my inspiration to fart really loud. How is your first <laughs> roll, Sire, besides that crap stealth roll? The methane will set fire. <laughs> set 25. Off an yep, I see it. Roll damage, Sire. Flamethrower. Sire, yeah, the dangerous warlock of the Fae. Uh. The Queen of Edge Lords or Edge Edge Ladies. <laughs> Thirteen damage. You actually have the cantrip to do extra damage for the Eldritch Blast. Cool. That's your first projectile, but at level six, you just get one, right? Or you get two. 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 So roll another projectile attack. You have to roll to hit with the second projectile, though. Oh, I have to roll to hit again. Mm -hmm. Yep, because it's considered a second projectile. Okay. And every time you hit a creature like this, if they were concentrating on a spell, they would have to make a concentration check every time. Okay. You hit with that one as well, and you already rolled damage, another 11 damage. You badly hurt this one with the two Eldritch Blasts. Do you have the repelling or pushing Eldritch Blast no. or effect? No. It's just the extra damage? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Is that the end of your turn, Sire? Yeah, that, that'll be Scratches the end. Scratches up. All right. One second, just gotta unequip that real quick. All right. So I oh yeah from my, from my, there I am all right so I already measured it out so I can sure make it I can make it to up oh I can make it to up here which is where I wanted to there. end yep nice using the terrain that climbing is double move so it would actually take you a dash action to move up there oh well then I'll just stop here then you want to stop up on the table that's fine that's your move. I had 35 movements, but I guess that's not. Oh, quite 35? Enough. Yeah. One sec. Yeah, see, climbing is double. Okay, I'll be a nice guy, Scratch. You can get up there. Oh. Um. I didn't know you. I, I didn't know my... you had 35. Nah, Merry it's Christmas. Fine. Squat nimbleness oh, and all that. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my crossbow, so that can't work. But I do have spells, which I yeah, will do. Gonna cast Bewitching Bolt on that one that's our new really person one? attacked. Yeah, yeah, this guy right here. Okay. You can also t yes. tab and say Mon 4, right? Is Mon 4. Hit, if we have like a lot of models and stuff, it's kind of easier to say, I want to hit number 4. And how okay. it'll work in your DMD is you'll actually <laughs> select the creature number 4, and that's how it matches up and everything like that. Um, roll All to right. hit, or is this a saving throw? It's both, but I have to hit cool. first for the save to take effect. It's already badly hurt. It's a 15 plus 8, so... Roll damage, or do I have to make a save? Yep. Uh, it's 36 lightning either way, but it does need to make a charisma save. Alright, so it takes 9 lightning damage, and it needs to make a DC 16 charisma save, or they will make the next how do, attack. How do you kill it, Scratch the Violent? Oh, uh, they will sing tales so of you and your mighty power. The plan, 
the plan was to make it befuddle itself to the point where it could attack next round, but instead it simply explodes. <laughs> <laughs> My, is that oh! return scratch? I like plan yes. B better. Or do you want to do another <laughs> bonus? Do you want to do another bonus action bardic inspiration on to Chef, maybe? No. Okay. No. <laughs> no love for Chef. This guy. You know, is... that's really racist. I'm going to find a beautiful goblin woman and. Not in here, this though. This guy moves up to you, and you have to make a deck save Odo as it spits fire onto you. The deck save is for half damage or 11. Um, it's a deck save of 11. For half damage. As he spits, he like inhales almost 12. like you pass, so you take half damage of three. So you take, um, so I'm gonna say, say, I'm gonna tell you the total damage when you pass the save or you have resistances, you have to keep track of that yourself. You take six total damage or three, right? You take six total damage, but you pass the save, so you take three damage, okay? Okay. Um, it inhales like this big breath and spits out, like just covering you with like goops of like steam, smoke, and fire. It like blows it off to, onto you. You kind of duck quickly out of the way as this one kind of slinks around from around the corner. You raise your shield and block most of the fire that Odo's up. I'm I'm not using my shield now. I'm two handed my sword. Yeah, kill oh, mom okay. three. I just kill, I'm using your model, yeah. man. Yeah, that's kill, okay. Kill mom three. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We have so many moms. F around and find out. We have so many moms and so so few children. That's right. <laughs> you want to roll, run up and attack this guy who just spit on you? Just Am I up? Spit on you. Yeah, yeah, you're you. up, buddy. Roll two hits. Yep. Old damage, Odo, as you begin to smite the fire newts of Hakamar. Hakamar? Oh, Hakamar, okay. Nine damage, you nine. cut into him. Yep. And you want to smite what, it all? 2 8. Do you want to smite? 2 D8. Yeah, if you want to use a level one. Yeah. Hold up. Release holy energy into it as you impale him with your sword. Okay, um, something I, I, I forgot I had was Minus one of my uh, proficiencies mm -hmm. is your um, I have a two-handed weapon proficiency. Great so master. it says I can re-roll a one or two, but I don't know if would would that count on a smite after, or would that just be the original? That's a great question, Odo, and how it works, because yeah. I when I programmed this into, I was thinking about the same question. How it works is the one or two thing works for the damage type one roll. Right, the original damage, okay. The original damage the, roll, that's the correct. radiant damage. So that's okay. why these guys, they use like the great sword because they roll 2d6. Or something, or mm -hmm. a 2D something. They use a 2D6 weapon. Mm -hmm. That way they have a greater chance to re-roll those 1s and 2s. Right? Mm -hmm. Does a little bit more damage if you're trying to min-max. <laughs> uh, is that the end of your turn, uh, Odo? Rune is up. Uh, I can take a second attack. Oh, yeah, your second attack, Odo. Yeah. He's still Roll alive. He's still alive. He's got badly hurt, though. You guys are doing a lot of damage. Yeah, I hit him. Roll damage. These guys have pretty low AC. You know, they're just walking around like the picture. They just have natural armor mostly. Maybe yeah, anytime, anytime Chef says they have a high AC, it means low. <laughs> <laughs> ten, oh, damage. ten damage. You cut him to him twice and hurt him real bad. What else do you want He's to do? Still standing? He's still standing. Creatures of the earth can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, Rune is up. Yeah, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna go near the door, and then I'm just gonna, you know, fire two quick arrows, you know, into into, into M into the third mom, because I hate third moms. I like don't second roll, moms. Don't roll a one, or you'll <laughs> hit Odo. 
Well, I'm, 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 I'm actually to the side of him, right? Or is he in front yes, of but me? but how it works is when he's in melee combat with someone, if you roll a one, you hit your friend. Uh, okay. I'll try not to roll a one then. I mean, I, I don't think I can miss. I, I think I have to roll it like a one anyway. <laughs> but, but. So if, if he does roll a one and hits me, does he have to roll again to see if he hits my armor class? That's or is correct. It automatic? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I hit the first one. And I have the second one, even though they're crappy rolls. But I'm I mean, I'm not. Do... I'm not going to be really. Yeah, because you have sharpshooter too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, roll damage, uh, buddy. I'm going to do uh, the additional one d six crimson red lightning damage as well. So it'll be an extra d six on top of the two piercing hits. So the first piercing hit does uh, ten points. You guys are drop kicking these guys. Plus yeah. another d six about. So the first one does 16 points. Is he still up? No, he's not. Okay, so I'll, I'll transfer the second attack to Mon 6 then. Yeah, man. Roll it up. Roll, roll damage. Uh, does, does this do the damage as well? Oh, yeah. 7, okay. Yeah. 7 points plus D6. Hold on. That was Lightning a very damage. Good roll. Your arrows fly out of your bow, infused with the Blood Hunter magic of lightning, striking yep. the creature. It electrifies it into his scaly red flesh and he drops to the ground. Yeah, it's just, yeah, lightning does the trick, even though we don't have a blizzard, thanks to control weather. Anyway, this so I'm going to hit the up. second guy did nine points. Mod six. Mod six to nine points. <clears throat> yeah. This guy, uh, let me see the speed of these guys. So, I'm, I think I'm done after yep. that. Mod six, yep, nine I'm points. Him up. This guy moves over here, but he dashes into this room right over here. Um, Chef is up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk up, make sure I can see uh, these guys, and then I'm gonna cast my favorite spell in the whole wide world. You know what spell I like casting? Entangle? No. What spell do I always use? Entangle? No. Yeah. <laughs> you use that a lot. <laughs> I'm going to use Erupting Herb. They need to oh, do nice. a next thing. I don't think you've used that once. I have used, used that a lot. Used I have it. used uh, Erupting Herb and Herb Tremor Go on. All right. I rolled a natural 20. Sorry, Chef. Half damage. Take my half damage. Let me cast gas. It's thinking. Still pretty good. The earth begins to erupt around all the... The smelters. 26, so 13 damage to do is too fast. Yeah, this does 13, right? Yep. It actually would have did really good damage too, Chef, but I, I just rolled well against the save. Uh, remove the AoE tool if you could. Okay, and then for my bonus action, I'm going to uh, to uh, hide behind uh, hide behind the party. I mean, yeah, bonus action, do my kind of action shit. I'll move you right here. And you're kind of out of sight, and you do a hide action, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, now the thing about hiding like that, and this is something kind of with kids to think about too, is like they see you, you come out, cast a spell, then you run back, you know, around. They see where you kind of go in the general direction, but it's like say if you were able to hide and then ready in action, that's when you could get like your sneak attack. But they kind of know you went in that direction, but you are hidden, so they couldn't target you unless they hit you with the perception roll. Um, All right. And that's something you can do with past perception. Uh, Mon seven is up. Yeah, if they failed the. He moves, uh, that he case moves up park. thirty like this. He's not within range, so he takes the dodge action. Warn is up. But this is like your fantasy. You get to kill moms. You know, think about it. Don't you ever want to kill your mom? Uh -huh. Oh my god. <laughs> Warn's trying to go Warren's down this tight, to... tight area, or do you want nope. him to go down this trail? Here, or you want him to go nope. in the room? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where do you want him to go, buddy? He's just staying here because nobody else to seems you to... Want, you want to have him guard this area right here? Yeah, because nobody okay. else seems to have noticed the two that ran off in that direction. It, what, I'm assuming what's... they're about to unleash those lizards, so he's going to oh, not let that get over here. That's Beast 11 and 12. Is that what it is? <clears throat> Mon 10, Mon 8 is up. It moves 30... Again, it makes the dodge action. Mushroom is up. Show me the foe. He moves up here. 
Um, I'll have Rune make a d20 attack roll with the crossbow. Okay, cool. Uh, what, I don't know what his modifier is. It doesn't matter. Just roll it up. He has a plus three. Plus three. Oh, cool, cool. Mighty with the crossbow. I, roll, I don't roll so well, so let's see what happens. Ten. It's a thirteen it plus his damage. Roll damage. Roll damage, so what's buddy. The, what's, what's the damage 1D10, on it? 1d10 plus three. 1d10. Really? That's a pretty it's a, heavy it's crossbow. It's a heavy crossbow? It's a light crossbow. Wait. It's a oh, d8, isn't it? 1d8. 1d8. I was thinking about a bow. I don't know why. The super heavy crossbow. It's a yeah, super heavy crossbow. They should buff cross heavy crossbow damage. So, two four points. <clears throat> it's a ballista. Awesome. Yeah, make it like something awesome. Um, he, he says, ah, I gotcha. <laughs> and he, as he shoots into it, Mon six that'd be, is up. That'd be seven points of damage, not four. He adds his dex mod. It's plus one. So he rolls four plus five. So he has another yeah, a plus one point. mod. Oh, I thought yeah. it was plus three. No. It's his mod modifier, not his proficiency bonus. This guy moves up to cure Odo within 10 feet of you. Or I'm going to say he moves up within to Rune, actually, who's shooting the bows around. Rune makes a deck save as he spits fire onto your Rune. Uh, I'm immune to fire. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, you, you it's got a range of 10 feet, resist. right? Yeah, I'm just saying he moves up in the range. If you want me to move him up here, I can. I, uh, uh, I save pretty easily. I got a, a 21. Yep, you save for half. Let's roll up the damage here. You take. I'm just going to tell you the to, uh, the half damage rune. Uh, you take okay. eight damage. I rolled actually max damage on that. Hey, can I can I fart at him and he can explode? Is that possible? <sighs> yeah, no, you might, I think use he my, would use explode. My, no, use my inspiration. Uh oh, what's kind of... beast twelve? The beast twelve is in getting into the initiative. I'll add another beast as well. They're just getting oh, ready, but they're not right. oh, totally boy. ready. <laughs> I mean, technically, Zen is up. tried to tell you. Technically, I get a, I get a bonus so, action. For since food, I so. threw my daggers, do I have to like pull out my short swords again? Is that, like, does that take an action? Oh, yeah, so Xing Xing did it. I'm just gonna say um, how technically it works in the system. I thought thought about with like weapon equip equipping weapons into weapon slots, one action point. But I'm not gonna be that hardcore about it. I'm just gonna say you easily equip it. Do you have the two weapon fighting feet, by the way? Uh, yeah, I do. So that's actually gives you the ability to draw both of them within it as a free action. All right, cool, great. Um, yeah, no, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run up to the guy that Odo didn't finish, okay. like this. Yeah, well, he and... actually they did finish him off. Rune finished him <clears throat> off. This guy yeah, is a new guy. He ran over him. here and spat, oh. you know, onto him. Yeah. Um. No. The, yeah, I'm gonna attack the uh, Mon Six, the Spitter. Yeah. Uh, with my short sword. And I think I should get a bonus action to fart on, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, that's a 26 there that definitely hits. Uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna swing at him with my uh, short sword. Yeah. Uh, I don't get sneak attack since I'm in front of him. You do not get sneak attack. Uh, but I do swing my second short sword. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, doesn't going... he get sneak attack if, he, if another attacker is within five feet of the uh, creature? No. If I remember correctly, that's it. He's not no, within that's five feet. Thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, you do hit, though, roll damage again, bud. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's a nine. Yeah, under rules of written, uh, he's not even within five feet. But we just simplified. He has to get advantage on the attack, and then rogues when yeah, they flank, have to, like, they get advantage. Yeah, get behind. He's exactly. a little bit far away, right? He's spitting at you from ten feet away. Mon 1 is up again. This guy undoes another monster out here. Oh, uh, great. This monster to the initiative count as well. Oh, boy. Oh, and he, spends his, he spends his action point doing that, and then he moves over to um, down a little bit out of the way to, to undo the next ones. Um, Sire is up. I would like to use my hex blades curse as a bonus action to place it on um, this guy right here. You can um, use the M key, right? To mark him out. Um, or you can guy. hit the tab and tell him, yeah, it's Mon 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I will come up 
Right. You're, a, you're a hex blade. Don't you want to swing your weapon at something? Yes, I will okay. come up. I'm going to help you out a little bit. So yeah, we'll move you up. Oh, touch runes model. I'm going to move you up into <laughs> flanking position, right? Yeah. So you now you're flanking with, with Zen, right? Um, when you're flanking a creature, you get plus two to hit it, right? Yeah, and then I'm going to take a swing at him with my hex blade. Um, Your rapier. My rapier from the Fey, from the Fey Wild. Mm-hmm. Roll it up. Oh. Rolled kind of low, unfortunately. Yeah. You swing out as you try to be a full-on gish, you know. <laughs> you, you're also a proficient spellcaster, maybe sitting back and casting those awesome uh, Eldritch Blasts would have been better. Um, you swing, you just get one attack, or I think you get two attacks, though, right, Fire? I think I only get one. No, I think you get two as a hex blade. Are you a level, level six five. like us? Yeah, just not oh, level six. Low. Roll another okay. attack, sire, as you get two attacks. Okay. Isn't it awesome when you have a DM that knows the rules just so well? Yes, but I just you miss. Oh, you actually hit seven. now because you have eleven Yay. plus two for the flank. That's thirteen. That meets the creature's AC. So you slash it in the back for its six piercing damage. And I didn't the, add the plus one, so I yes, get into the weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's that's fine. You still kill it. Seven. It only had a few HP left, so you slice it oh. right in the back, and it drops right before uh, Zen. Zen, what do you say? Is the new warlock slays a creature right in front of you? Uh, that's that's not that. I haven't seen that before. That's uh, that's new. <laughs> Scratches up. <laughs> so saying as. Not one, but two managed to go over there, and I can hear the chain starting to fall into the ground. Uh, I'm going to cast... Yeah, and before Scratch goes, I'll Scratch make a nature roll. Scratch is probably uh -oh. a pretty knowledgeable bard. He probably knows a lot about stuff. And it's cool. And I want to see if he can roll. I'll say the DC's 10 on the nature rolls. Scratch. I got a, I got a plus one, so probably not. But here we go. You want to roll with inspiration? You can. I haven't seen the result yet. Uh, sure, yeah. Oh, well, with inspiration. <laughs> you saw the result before me, and then you said you won the roll with inspiration like a dirty player would. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you said I could. Go ahead so. and roll it. You can uh, then click off the inspiration, right? Roll one more nature it's... check with advantage. Advantage? What? Oh. Yeah. So you oh, this is advantage. Yeah. Yes, exactly. No, it, it, it got lower, so no. Terrible. Uh, I will help you out a little bit, though, Scratch. Uh, there, there's a lot of fighting. There is a lot of noise going on in here, though, right? There's fire smelting things. and mm -hmm. But there is more noise coming from over here. Um, over where? Over, to, over this way. Oh, I see it. Over this way. Yeah, I see it. There's, a, there's some doors here. All right. I was trying to help you out with what this pool of something is here. By the way, you like silver. this pool of silver. Yeah, but it it could be silver. Scratch, what do you do? Not your turn. You want to cast a spell over there? Yeah, Sinking Cloud. So I can try to close off that entrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, do you I, do you want me to make the saves on the start of their turn, right? Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. As this area now... So what we'll do... Um, can you right-click your AoE there? At this very end uh, of the tip of your AoE? Can you right click I, that little I, ball? I am. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening? Okay, so what I want you to do is remove your AoE. Okay. And I will, I'm going to do it, because this must be a GM thing where only I can create these persistent status of, uh, area of effects like this. I wish they oh. would give that permission to players. This is the stinking cloud effect, okay? Mm-hmm. One way we can also do it is we start getting higher level like this, guys. We can actually rename it the stinking cloud. Right. All right. So we actually know what effect it is as well. And if you actually hit tab, you'll see in the center of the of the little ball is a stinking cloud. Cool, huh? Yeah, you, you don't need to cast that. I mean, I would have farted in that direction and get stinking cloud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a bonus scratch. action for. What else do you want to do, buddy? Is that it? Move a little bit further back here, so I'm not so close to the ledge. Cool, cool. But uh, that should, that's all I'm going to do. Odo's up. Odo. So and nobody's six. near me, right? 
there. Well, nobody's everybody directly near you. you. Uh, everybody's near you. But um, do you have that ability yet, Odo, where you give like your auras around everybody now? Yeah. Everybody so, gets uh, 10 yeah, foot plus, within, gets plus two to saves. I was nobody, gonna... um, you've, you've seen the warlock. She steps up to the front of the group, and she cuts that mm -hmm. guy right in the back. She's killed the last um, fire uh, fire nuke that's come closer. But there is a couple mm -hmm. over here, but they're dodging, right? Because they weren't quite in range yet. What do you do? So I'm up. Right here, buddy. I'm going to move up. Okay. Just you move up. not You're that far. That, that's us all. What do you want to do? You also want to dodge, maybe? No, I, I don't want them attacking other party members. Okay. You know, I want to make myself you want to, a target. What's your, what's your action? As you, okay, so one cool thing I want to do is mm -hmm. an action. You can intimidate him, Odo, using your strength. So Actually, why do you want to intimidate him, maybe? Yeah, you can, like, I might taunt them in a way with intimidation. Don't I have a taunting spell? Something's... I think there is a taunting spell. Yeah. I'll let you look for it. I'll I spell. might not have loaded that. Compelled, one. compelled duel. Yeah, it's compelled duel. That's right. Yeah, I don't have compelled duel. Okay, so what I want you to do, Odo, is roll a strength check for me, buddy. This is versus their insight, or do you have intimidation um, as a proficiency? I actually do. Roll an intimidation roll. Get plus also. Five on that. Also, don't forget that you still have that combat inspiration I gave you before the fight started. You can roll D8 yeah. if you wish to add it to the roll. So 12, and then... Would you like to add the D8, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay, roll D an extra D8. I try to prevent as much metagaming as I possibly can, so this is a contesting still skill challenge. It's your intimidation versus this guy's roll. And what it does is, Odo, this gives him disadvantage on his next attack, saving throw, or ability check. So I added together, it's 20. Okay. He fails. You intimidate him. How do you intimidate this fire new, Odo? Br bring, bring it on, flame boy. <laughs> Rune is up. Um, I'm going to fire two arrows quickly into Mon... Whoever's closest to the next... Like Mon 6, I think it is, right? The, Mon sorry, Mon seven. 7. Mon 7, yeah. You roll with disadvantage because they're dodging. Wait, wouldn't, the shop the arrows. Shoot, wouldn't shop shooter null that because it um, does not. They're dodging. Does not stop dodge. It, it doesn't, but I have to roll a one to miss, so I don't think it matters. Sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, um, so I'll just attack them anyway, uh, regardless. Let me just so make sure. So basically, this is like the uh, level twenty guy you played in the Vecna game. <laughs> in some ways, because their AC is so low, you know, and I and I and I dumped and I dumped the mutagen into my body. So hey, I, I, I this is the encounter. It is what it is, man. <laughs> Uh, nice. The first one missed actually because I did roll, roll a one. natural one. No, but that was because no. of dis that was because of disadvantage. So you uh, hold on. And you I are suck. so confident. Let's see. He's All not. Right. So how it works for him is he's not in direct combat, melee combat with anybody. So even though yeah. you're shooting through, say Odo, I don't punish <clears> you that <throat> hard. He has to be in direct melee combat for it to. Oh, but then he got a twenty-one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Damage, so, buddy. so rolled. You're gonna kill him, actually. 12 points and plus what d6 so hold on 12 points plus a d6 lightning uh so total of 17 points yeah you can just tell me the total as you kill him you miss terribly and you what do you say as you knock back your bow and arrow the second time and you kill him i'm like there's no place to run mushroom says good shot you. my smell will find you <laughs> Mon 5 is up. He undoes another beast. Oh no. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, but y'all aren't doing anything to stop it. Uh, Why can't, I thought the Mongsis was the closest. Who the hell's in there? He does another one. <laughs> um, he was in the stinking cloud though, so I don't want to add him yet. Now what happens is all these ones get added to the initiative count since they're provoked. Um, they all actually since Scratch, what happens is Scratch present attacks with a hostile spell. I'm going to say all of them now are provoked. They all start going crazy. They'll start, you hear just sounds of like, you guys think back to Portner and Zaru of 
the dinosaurs held in the pen in the arena, they are just start going crazy, right? Um, what's like a fervor is, you know, something bad is happening. They all sense something. So I'm going to add them all to the initiative count here. Is that nine huge dinosaurs or large dinosaurs? Yeah, because that, I mean, they're all getting, they're all now um, getting affected by this spell here. So they work like as a packed animal almost. And, you know, if one person in the pack starts to get hurt, they're all going to start just, they're all still attached by the reins in there, right? So they're still attached to the wall, okay. right? With the range. Um, the ones that are I've already done done are freely done, but I'm going to um, roll the uh, comm save with this guy, right? We got this, guys. I mean, some of, none of us already fought the dinosaurs guy, before. This guy, uh, is he incapacitated from the stinking cloud? Um, let me actually reboot the spell description. I know he falls prone and right. he's just yakking. So... It goes around corners, lingers for the duration. Each creature that's completely within the cloud starts to turn this con save. Unless it's a giant lizard and then it dies automatically. Can he only crawl out of the cloud? I think that's the only thing you can do, right? It spends its action turn uh, on that turn retching and reeling. So yeah, whatever so that crawl, translates right? to you. No. He's just trying to remember how we did it with the uh, the flying guys. You had them fly away, but I mean well, they were no. They were they fell to the ground, retching and screaming. I'm trying to think. Oh they yeah, one, crawl of, out of, the crawl. one of them, one of them actually crawled off the cliff. So yeah, I remember that. He can crawl. They can crawl outside of the stinking cloud. That's what I'm thinking. He spends his turn. Sure. They they they're. Let me, let me reread this real quick. There's not a lot of description in the spell, unfortunately. It's like three paragraphs. Yeah. All it says is that this creature spends that turn on their actions. Retching turn, and reeling. Retching and reeling. Yeah. It's it's like incapacitation. Uh, it's it specifically <laughs> says that they use so their action. How it, how it works is they use their an action, but their move um, is not used. That's why I've Correct. interpreted it. So they crawl out of the cloud. Um, Chef is up. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Um, I don't see one see monster. There. What do you mean they? It's a one guy, right? There are nine of them over there. No, no, so I mean, like, what I'm going to do... Not one guy releasing them. There's two so over I, there. What I'm going to do... <laughs> what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cast um, my count trip uh, frost, Frostbite? It's a con save. On the one that I can see. Um, which, so involved. let me see, you're here, you see the last guy, you want me to make a con save with this guy? Yes, and it's okay. ice damage, so if it's double, just tell me. <laughs> I failed the saving throw, you got him this time, Chef. And, oh, Lady Locks left me tonight at seven. <laughs> He's almost dead, he, he gets hit pretty badly. Since it's not a deck save, if it was a deck save, he'd roll with advantage because he's dodging. Uh, um, is that the end of your yeah. turn, Chef? In, I want to be behind. I want to hide behind. Uh, want to kind of move back in position. Friend. Okay. Yeah. So what you, you're not like a halfling where you can hide behind other creatures, but I'll move you back behind this wall, right? So you just slip in and you slip back out. Vorn is up. Um. Well, I mean, Vorn can see the target now, so I'm going to have. You can him. see these guys. You can see these guys down here. Yeah. Have him move over here. Okay. Okay. You want to have him move down the hallway? Yeah. Okay. And since this guy is can... prone because he came out crawling and you know yakking. Yep. And he is going to head. he's going to beat the shit out of him. Um, okay. He gets advantage since he's prone, right? Yeah. All right. And see, you're not. I'm going to say moving down the hallway. Well, how how technical do you want me to be? You're right here. What's Bourne's movement speed? Thirty. He doesn't make yes. it, does he? Yeah, he doesn't make it. He'd only get that, but he does get down to the end of the hallway because he has to squeeze through that tight, narrow passageway, right? Because he's such a big guy. I mean, if he doesn't make it, he's not moving. So okay, you want to keep him back? Yeah, it is the purpose of me move. Why is this so difficult? Come on. Because it's supposed to be difficult because you're a big ass creature. <laughs> no, I mean like it, it keeps going into the. How you want to? Right. How you want to do it is you want to shift, click him like this almost. I yeah, that's what I did, and he went to the wall. 
because he's not supposed right, to be so moving through there. <laughs> it, it, it's fine. That just means the dinosaurs can't move through there. That's true. All right, so he's too. he's gonna stay there and make sure that they don't go through there. So dodge action, I guess. <laughs> That's his turn. Yeah, give me one second. I have a question. Yes. Uh, you said that someone would get advantage on somebody thrown, but isn't it rules as wet written that? somebody gets disadvantage when you attack somebody prone? If you use a ranged attack against a prone opponent, that is true. Oh. Uh, but a melee attack is with advantage. Hmm. Give me a second. I am trying to figure this out. I'm trying to look for these creatures here. Let me look up my, my notes here. I probably have it in there. They have one hit point each. They have one hit point each, that's oh. right. Yep, on our armor class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I had to look up the name of this creature. The vulnerability to all damage types. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to see the die roll of how many break for each round. Uh, Vorn's turn is over. Mon 8 is up. It's badly hurt. It sees all of its friends dying, but it moves up to you, Odo, right here. Uh, makes a spitting attack on you. Make another deck save, Odo. Odo. Odo makes it. As you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're sitting in the front tanking. Right. How many of these people are spitting on us? How uh, dare you? You fail, so you take the full fire damage. I roll max damage, Odo. 16 fire damage. Oh no. As you this one breathes it, and it says something in a strange language to you, like, it probably sounds a lot like. <laughs> Blah, blah. Something like that. <laughs> Same to yeah, you, buddy. What it's doing. How are you feeling, Odo? <laughs> are you pretty badly hurt now? No, I'm not even half. You're not even sweating. Mushrooms up. Yeah. That's what I taste. Just a flesh wound. Roll a d20. Rune plus three. You're after the roll as Mushroom takes another crack at him. Mushroom. Hare Krishna. There's 12 beasts, guys. 12. Uh, I don't think he hit this time. He rolled a nine. Aye. Uh, let me see if he can cast a spell, though. There's only nine models so far. Uh, there's nothing here. <laughs> okay, the beasts are up now. So what happens is this one makes a save. So this is where they're all kind of grouped up in the initiative count, unless you guys want me to put them back in alternate initiative. Um, so the problem is when creatures' initiative get groups up like this, people can die. You know, if I start rolling well. What's a saving throw for uh, your stinking cloud? It That's true. is a... Um, 16. Anybody got a fireball? Fireball might Leo. work on the... On the... Uh, what's it called? Lizard. This guy passes. It's still opaque, so moving through this is considered half movement speed. Because he's been freed. So let me see where he's going to see what's going to happen here. Fireball, uh, some sort of bigger I'm looking at their spell. movement. They move 50. So you can move 25 through it. He charges out of the smoke. He probably gets to, like, I'm going to move him up to Odo like this. So he charges out. Um, as he hears Odo probably out there fighting with the, this thing. This thing charges forth and does a fire burst attack. Odo makes another deck save. You guys are doing or a like a, or like a tidal wave. Just think about your abilities and use your abilities. This this is supposed to be challenging. I freed, I freed four creatures and like less than well, half uh, You Give pass him a reaction. Oh, you want, he passes with a twelve. The DC is twelve. Um, this is a recharge ability that they can use. Everyone within oh, it's a, it's an actual target ability. He blows it right down mm -hmm. onto you, like this. Odo, he hits you with an AOE mm -hmm. effect. He hits the actual. The guy, it doesn't even matter. This guy, you see him as he gets blasted with this huge furnace of uh, fire. Like this fireball, essentially, this small fireball erupts onto you, Odo. This guy takes no damage, but um, you take half damage of 46 fire damage. Or 17, 17 fire damage divided by two, right? The next beast 17? Is yeah, 17 divided by two. So you got to divide it by two because you pass the save. 
Next beast is up. He makes a con save. He uh, fails the save because the DC is 16, and he tries to crawl out. He crawls out this way at half speed, right? Something like that across the ground. So he moves up to there. Beast, this beast is up. He's, if his base is in the AoE, he's affected by the AoE, he passes. And then he, he doesn't want to move probably through it, so he's actually going to move. But he can't move down the hallway like that, so he's actually going to charge through. He move, uses his dash action to come out up to you. Um, he could probably, yeah, he can move 100 feet, so he can probably move up to there. He moves up to you, um, Sire. Mm -hmm. Next beast is up. Did you say 100 feet? It's a dash action, that's correct. This one okay. makes another con save. It fails, so this one also falls prone, reeling and racking, you know, and moves up to here. Wait, I have a question. Yep. Uh, didn't you say that he was at half action? Or half? Uh, no. Half? Oh, you're right. You're No, because this guy passed the save. Sorry. Oh, okay. This guy passed. If I put him into the prone position if they failed the save, right? Oh. Um, this guy is up. His base is touching your effect, right? So I make a roll with him. Mm -hmm. He fails, so he also goes down yakking. So we have this giant Congo line of yakking mm. dinos. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way I read the spell, too. It's like they they are, they are fall to the ground like yakking, right? That's what I did mm -hmm. before yep. with it, right? Retching and reeling. That, the way I interpret it is like they fall prone to the ground. They retch, or like retching through the cloud. And they can't see through the cloud, so they'd be moving at half speed anyways. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, this one it moves up here. Um, this one is starting to move through and spits onto you guys. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This guy was still tied up. This guy's yeah, still how tied many up. creatures have they released already? It's like, they start, how many is Okay, it? so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll a d6. Divide by two. I roll three. So I'm going to say three of them uh, get unchained. I'll be... I'm going to say this one. I'll alternate it. These three get unchained. Right? So this one, this one, and this one are getting unchained. So this one moves up to here. It breathes a bunch of fire right here. And hits... Um, he, he can make an e AoE attack past more? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. that just completely ruined the purpose of him standing there. All right. Well, he he breathes. That's how it's an AOE. It has a distance of 60 plus a 10-foot AOE. And so it hits all three of you guys there. I'm going to use your react. I'm going to use a reaction to absorb elements. Okay, cool. So. Um, you guys have to make a deck save. Yeah, yeah, I didn't push so I'm going to be a nice guy with Vorn. Vorn gets advantage on the deck saves because he didn't do anything last turn, right? So he's dodging, right? Mm -hmm. So Vorn rolls with advantage. <clears throat> Yeah, my deck save is fine. 14. I believe in you guys. You guys can do this. Uh, I'm going to roll a d6 to absorb the fire, whatever it is. So, so Scratch an... fails, right? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Born has, a... Born Born has, has a... a minus one. Let me take a look. Born rolls with advantage, though. Born yeah, he did. fails, he so, rolled a unfortunately. Six and an eight. Um, Rune also fails, and you guys take. F and no, also I didn't fail. I, I, I passed. What do you mean I failed? I'm sorry, Rune. Oh, I'm sorry, Rune. You passed because you rolled a D three, the three plus the nine. No, 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 no. What I'm three is for the absorption, the energy absorption of the three fire damage. Uh, uh, I rolled a fourteen for the save. Okay, sorry. I just saw your custom roll of a nine. Uh, so you because you didn't actually roll the deck save. That's what threw me off, buddy. The, um, well, the nine, you have to add nine plus five, because it's yeah, the dex, right? You, yeah. you can roll the dex save in the character sheet, so to add your modifier. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So you passed. Um, I want you to also roll a d20 um, rune for our... I'll actually roll for the guy, since I have a stat block up. He has a plus one. He fails as well, so he takes full damage. He has 30 hit points, so let me put that out for him. And this is, um, so he takes full damage, Warren takes full damage, you take half damage, Rune, and let me roll the damage up. Well, you also have to subtract three points from my damage because yeah. of the, I'm absorbing what into I, the fire. What I will do is I will tell you the full damage and you can do that back end math, okay? Okay. I roll kind of low, 15 damage. So it's halved, right? Ah, I'm getting burned to death again! <laughs> That's what this guy says. Fucking bag, nab it! Um, 
beast fours up. So I said the three of them, this guy's chained, right? This guy is released. He comes down here too. And then he, um, he, he like, these like pack animals. I'm gonna be kind of hard about this guy. This is Tomb of Annihilation. This guy ducks a little bit and he breathes over and does the same fucking attack. You both have to make deck saves again. So I'm going to have Vorn, uh, Rune, and uh, this guy again. I'll make the deck save with him. He Don't fails worry, again as I well. Tidal wave. I can just tidal wave these bitches away. That's your chance. Oh, Vorn fails yes again. What, what, am I, what are we rolling again? You rolled another deck save, right? I rolled another deck save? Yes. Okay. The same attack okay. is happening. Two nines. Uh, well, I did this again. Anyway, 15. Okay. So you take half damage again, uh, Rune. So here comes the damage. Oh, I didn't roll the right one. I'm sorry. Here we go. I roll kind of low again. A 10. This guy is badly hurt, though. Right? He's down to five hit points. He's like, help me! Help me, Chef! <laughs> chef, are you going to embrace your healing bitch roll now? Well, looks like I have to be the healing bitch. This guy is still tied up. This guy is free. He moves up, and he's trying to move through the crowd of shit here. And you hear this guy whistle or something like that. You know, you hear like a whistling sound or something from this guy. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, this guy is still tied up. Zen is up. All right, so I'm gonna be going to uh, behind which one is this? Beast Ten. I'm gonna yeah. like run around him. Um, you get advantage on the attack, buddy. Exactly, and I'm just gonna you know slash at his feet, hoping to like uh, rip out his tendons. How does it tell? <laughs> You're gonna slash down at his tendons. Exactly. Have you shown this a uh, picture of what these dinosaur they, things look like? Uh, they look like chocobos. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. Chocobos. So, there's, so now there's so there's now there's no point of killing Monster Five. I mean, they're all loose. I mean, it's like they're getting uh, loose. There's still a few that are tied up. Eight, as well as sneak attack damage. So yeah. that's eight plus ten. That's eighteen damage. And I'm gonna roll a badly hurt another another short sword attack. You cut across its tendons with one swipe. It's I'm gonna say yeah, since you kind of did like a nice called shot, and you critically hit on the second one, and you finish it off with grace. Zen, as you take your short sword, and you're like, I'm trying to think of that movie. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings, where the guy takes he's flying going in between the elephants, and yeah, yeah and then goes like and he's like and he's like swinging his swords around. That's kind of what you're doing. Exactly. And it's then you finish it, it off. Awesome. You're a fucking beast, man. What else do you want to so do? Guys, that was your, these so guys aren't that tough. Yeah, they're not that tough. <laughs> uh, Zen, um, you you cut it down. Now you still have your bonus action as a rogue, right? Yes. What do you want to do, bud? Um, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, am I in range of this guy? Wait, let me check real quick. Am I in range for the, like this guy's attack? Um, unknown. Like, would I, would I, um, would I trigger an opportunity attack? Is what I'm asking. If I were to go away now. Since unknown. I walked, like, 25 feet. So I still have unknown. 5 feet left. Unknown? Yeah, Alright, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use my bonus action to disengage, because, you know, yeah. he seems kind of big. He might have a big range. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, just move a little bit back to like here okay mon one is up mon one is in the smoke effect the uh the stinking cloud effect so he makes a con save he fails so he's yakking out but he's right near the edge of it so he can kind of see where he's going and he crawls up onto one of them he mounts one of them oh no he can't mount it that would be an action so he's just kind of there sire is up uh, Sire, um, aims an eld aims two Eldritch Blasts at this guy. Yeah. Uh, 
Nothing area of effect, I guess. Hold on a second. Roll pretty high on the first one. Did you roll a natural 20? Almost. A 19? Mm -hmm. Not satisfied by it. Oh, come on. Does an 11 hit? It does not, unfortunately. But you do oh. do the damage. You do 13 force damage with the first attack. It strikes into it. And you kind of see the same thing as Kisro says to you. It, do, it appears to be badly hurt even after the first attack. It's not like... It's built to be like more of a nimble creature. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. offensive, but it's not meant to be like tanking stuff. Think of like a horse in real life, guys. No, it gets hit with like a fucking Eldritch Blast. You know, it's not going to be doing that great. Scratches up, right? Or uh, Sire, is that the end of your turn? Yep, that's the end of my turn. Scratches up. All right, so... Here we go. I am going to... Once again, the witching bolt. You want to do it on the guy back here or this guy? The beast. Uh, or the, guy? the beast. Okay. Roll an attack roll. Yep. yep, yep. Don't roll a one or you hit Odo. Oh no. So that is a 14 to hit. Nice. These guys, this guy's AC is 14. <laughs> Alright, 3d6 lightning and I need a charisma save. Let's see if you kill Unless this kill, th this is a very oh lot, large amount of damage. It's 16. Yeah, you're rolling well, buddy. You, you shoot out this bewitching bolt. This is lightning damage, right? Yep. You electrify a you know, across right in front of Odo and it collapses in front of you, Odo, like this and dies as the, cor <laughs> as the bodies are starting to pile up, Odo. And it disappears, just like in any video game. <laughs> hey, remember we need yeah. to we need to skin them, right? Get the leather. <clears throat> These are oh, creatures. Up. It's gonna take way too much time. Okay. <laughs> the last guy's I'm in gonna front of you, Come and get me. Whack whack at him. I'm gonna do thunderous so, smite. So practical. Scratch is so practical. We should just get everything. Thunderous smite <laughs> cast as a bonus action spell, right? Mark it on the sheet. <clears throat> Um, now, and it's a concentration spell, so on your next attack that lands, you do an extra 2d8 thunder damage, I believe. Crap. Roll to hit. 11. You roll a natural one? No. Oh. A three. Okay. Uh, no effect, it just doesn't hit. I thought, doesn't he get advantage against the prone lizard? What's he attacking? He's attacking no, the guy attacking, from the uh, thing in front of him. It tagged me to look at where the models are at, um, Steve. Okay. And um, take a second attack. Roll it up. I can't see your attack rolls. Maybe I have to refresh my log. <laughs> no game activity. Oh, no, there we go. No, I just I don't, don't see his, attacks I don't see his at character. All. Oh, okay. Sometimes there is line of sight with the models because you might 15. be in a different room or place. Uh, roll damage. And now you also do your thunder damage as well. Right. This guy was already badly hurt, though, so it might be a wasted spell slot. It but that's is. okay, Odo. That's what it's for. What are you doing? What are oh, you doing oh. here, Odo? You're chewing bubble Eat gum. Damage. You kill it, out. Odo. You don't even and need. I'm out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do out damage. Out you did damage, damage, buddy. You cut another one down, Odo. With your second so attack, what else do you want to do? Odo, you kind of get the bad feeling, though. You look over to the left, you're making a lot of noise in here fighting mm -hmm. these guys. I'll roll a, a, I, something. I'll roll a d4. In a certain amount of rounds, some more creatures are coming. Oh, no. Yeah. It'll be the cavalry, literally. Uh, the this is uh, exciting, guys. Let's go kill some. <laughs> Odo, what do you want to do? You just you finish them off, but do you want to move it all or do anything? Yeah, I'm looking. Um, I don't want to go into the cloud, so. Are It'll we all? Um, I'll, I'll just stay one. Can I cast a spell? Is that a, a bonus action? No, it's a full action spell to dispel something. That full action. Yeah, okay. You're trying right, to dispel my will... spell? Huh? Were you trying to dispel my spell? <laughs> No, 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 no. I was, I was, I was going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. But. Okay. Yeah, that's an action. I'm going to say your turn's over. Rune yeah. is up. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to fire two arrows at Monster Eleven. I'm oh, sorry, Beast Eleven. You can't see Beast Eleven. It's heavily obscured. 
I can't see him. But so how? It, thinking, how so thinking how cloud obscures? Do you, okay. do you remember the Vec Vecna game? What we do is it's total obscurement. And rules is written. If the creature can't be targeted, you can't attack it. Now, how I do it is I like giving you a chance uh, to I, I just, listen, just just listen for a second. I okay. like the chance. No, move your character back. It's okay. Um, <laughs> what? I, I mean, the, just hold on, Rune. Just wait. Okay. You hear it yakking, and you hear something in the cloud. Right. You know something is there. When you make an attack roll at something that's heavily obscured, that you're just taking a wild shot at, really, right? You just roll with disadvantage. Well, I mean, there was a creature in front of Rune. That's uh, not Rune, sorry. In front of Born as well. So I just, I mean, if, that, if I can't see this guy, I don't know. I wouldn't even move to that okay. location. Let's move that's back what I'm trying then. to say. Yeah. Sure. Where do you want to move now? Uh, so what I'll do is, uh, that stupid tunnel is so short. I guess I'll just shoot at the one in front of Born then, uh, if I can. Yeah, you can for sure. Okay. Can someone I'm take the bathroom that? break real quick? Thanks, Sire, for letting me know. <clears throat> Rune is up. Okay, got it. Hold on. Is it just a normal hit then? This one. Roll to attack. Got yeah, it. I mean, I would just give him plus two AC since you're shooting through Born, like in a tight hallway. So. That one misses. Uh, I didn't hit with the eight to one. That's really bad. Oh, no, 17, 17, 17? Yeah, 17 hits. As you're trying to shoot around Vorn and the tight rocks, it's even a skilled shot for an expert marksman like yourself, but the second one lands true, so you can roll damage. But uh, I, have a, I have a question. If yeah. Sharpshooter ignores cover, they still get the plus two AC? I'm just curious. Um, no, you're right. I'm sorry. It does. I'm sorry. You would have hit with both then. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Right, right, right. I just... I just hate that sharpshooter thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the only—I mean, it's the Minus only major weapon I got. The first one. No, it's good. Man. I like it. Uh, four, eight. Sorry, hold on. I'm gonna add all of it together, so sure, to save your life. And what the hell was eighteen? And then two d six on the lightning. You see, like the the fire, the residual fire is still kind of where you at though, Rune, right? The, the huge fire blast. You look over at your friend, and he looks like he's been barbecued like a s'more or something, you know? He's a, like this poor albino dwarf is looking like a s'more now. Uh, okay, well at least he's getting a good tan. Anyway, 20, 23 <laughs> points of damage. You shoot not albino anymore, you shoot, right? you, shoot a, you shoot true and you kill it. Alright. Two arrows right into the front of his chest and it falls over dead. Oh yeah, it's lightning splash. Yeah. I, you know, feel my, feel my fart. Anyway. Feel the fart. Uh, how many of these things are there? Jeez. Uh, Monster there 5 is up now. This one, he's outside of the AoE, I believe. Let's see where he's yeah. at. Yeah, he crawled out. Uh, okay, he stands He stands up as part of his move and mounts the dude. Uh, he reigns it over. Um, I will. He's just basically how it works is you got to kill the mount before we get at him. That's kind of how I'll do it. Uh, Chef is up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a spell. That do something, man. Just on three time. times. Area, 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 of, area of effect. Do something, dude. <clears throat> okay. So what board. I'm going to do is that I'm going to cast. Heal me. I'm the gonna cast Kyle Lane. So we'll hit one, what? two, three, four of those fucking dinosaurs. They all need to do. Uh, uh, you gonna cast what? Have, do you even have line of sight? Yeah, I can. The exploding move. dinosaur spell. <laughs> Level three. I can tidal move wave. a part more and see the see see one of the dinosaurs place tidal wave, and it's still thirty feet. It's a thirty foot long tidal wave that goes <laughs> ten feet. So I will hit everything. So how it works nope. is it's a. Let me read the spell out. You conjure a wave of water that crashes down at the enemies within the range of the spell. The water then spreads out across the ground in all directions, extinguishing unprotected flames and areas. So how it works is I have it as a 30-foot AoE. You create this huge wave that starts to conjure right in front of Vorn. Really? And it's no, right low. Here, right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to describe it, man. Relax. So what's happening is you send a wave down here. Um, let me take a look. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to allow it. Um, you hit, you create a 30-foot AoE. Um, move, remove this 20-foot AoE, please. 
That was not me. Well, someone had it. So, yeah, we'll put it in there. and We'll say it hits all the creatures. It can't go around... AoE cannot go around corners. So, But I will allow it to hit um, these creatures here. Okay. And they all need these, to guys, like... these guys crawling, I'm going to allow it to hit this guy too. But I won't hit these guys, okay? Right? Okay. Um, um, dex save, please. Yes, let's do it. I'm just going to do a group dex save with them. Or I can do it. Why don't you roll damage, and then I'll, since it's kind of doing a, you roll pretty low Nine. on the damage. Yeah, you roll pretty low, so I'm just going to make a group deck save with them. Okay, here we go. I pass. Do I take half damage? Yeah, you take half damage. I do. But I take four damage on these guys. It's still pretty awesome, you just rolled shit damage. Uh, if they failed the deck save, they would have all been thrown too. Damn it. Yeah, that would I go awesome. back into my hiding corner. <laughs> it was still pretty awesome. It's a third level spell. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like a cool little fireball that they gave Druids, right? Because it's from Xanathar's. That's yeah, what they did it's a spell. really cool spell. I, I, I wanted to use something other than uh, Earth Tremors because I've been... Earth Tremors has been my best friend for a very long time. No, man. You're doing great. Okay, I did the damage on those guys. Um, Vorn is up. Would you mind removing the AoE, please? Yeah, you just right-click the AoE when you're done, please. Thank you. Thank you. So I can put this back. All right, Vorn regenerates his to... HP at the start of his turn, right? Yep. And he is also going to cast his own stinking cloud. That you have stored into him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, let me let me click it up. Remove your AOE. Yeah, one second. I was healing Vorn real quick. Uh, M. Um, so on the start of their turn, they'll make the save on it. Um, yep. uh, Mushroom is up. He's like, don't call me a coward. You didn't heal me, friend. He like moves out of the way. He's just kind of like, he's actually running out. He's dashing out. He's like staying around the corner here. He's like, give me some healing. He's just badly hurt. He doesn't want to stay in the fight. Beast is up. Now I start making the saves with these guys. Pass with this guy. The right sheet. This guy comes out. Stands up. Um, let me see if he's hurt. He is not. He um, hits all three of you guys, though, here. All three of you make a deck save right here. All righty. It was all three, me? Yes, that would be Odo, Kiz, from Zen, and Sayar. It's a the DC 23. is 12. Yeah, Looks like I Sayar fails. Looks like Odo and Sayar fail the saving throw. Here we go. Here comes the damage. I'll tell you the full damage. 14 damage. That's the full damage. If you pass the save, which would be uh, Zen, he would take half or seven. Beast. Seven, that's nothing. This beast is but, up. He He's gagging. What? But with horses' smell reaction, they get a minus 14 to damage. They can take no damage. This guy <laughs> passes. Two. Um, he comes up. He provokes an attack of opportunity from Odo as he stands up from prone. Actually, probably wouldn't even be able to stand up from prone. It doesn't have to be a it actually breathes fire on, too. Let's see if it's damaged. It is not. It looks up, though, and sees Scratch there. Let's spread the love a little bit. Scratch, make a deck save. Damn, we could shoot it that far? Yeah. All right. They've been spitting on us. They're like, you know, the entire Pretty combat. Powerful. Pretty powerful. <laughs> damage, I, I absolutely passed that. Take half damage. Take 22 total damage, or 11 for half. Make a concentration check to maintain the spell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beast 8 is up. This guy's prone as well. I've been rolling pretty good on the con saves. This guy passes as well. Um, let me see how far the movement is. He has to spend half his movement to get up. He would still Ooh, be in uh, the... Specifically for Beast 8, he has to make two because he overlapped with the second stinking cloud. Which one? 
uh, Beast A, he overlapped with Born Stinking Cloud as well, so he would also have this to guy right the... here. Yep. Um. Okay. Sure. I'll I'll say. Well, I don't know. It's kind of like mul Yeah. I will say multiple AOE effects can affect it. I'm make the second save. He fails, so he gags out. I'm gonna just move him up to here for now because he's just moving forward. And he's four is up. He makes a save. Um, he's still tied up, so I'm going to roll the d6 with these guys. They roll pretty high again. Six, so three of them come up loose. I'm going to say uh, this guy, this guy, and this guy come loose. Right. Who's so releasing? One, they just break free, um, going oh. into a wild frenzy from being casting, gagging fucking magic on them. Um, this guy passes a save. Um, he comes up. Moves at half speed, so he moves 25. He moves up to the cavern here. He's still in the cloud, though, or I mean, he moves up to Vorn and stuff, and he breathes the uh, AOE effect again. He's gonna probably breathe it onto Vorn, like he targets it right here to hit Vorn and uh, Rune. Both Vorn and Rune make deck saves. It's starting to get annoying, but it's all right. I'll be right back, guys. Sure. Orn unsurprisingly fails again. Okay. Yeah. 16 fire damage is what I roll. Beast 3 is up. Let's see what he is. Beast 3 is in the cloud. Born makes a concentration check. Keep the uh, spell up. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the damage we keep taking from these fire things is just, you know, kind of nonsense. That's a 10. That's a 10. Oh, because his con is plus four? Yep. Okay, so he passes. Let me put it back up here. Man, you just ready to make me fail, ain't you? Well, I just, I didn't see the modifier. I can't make a save using his thing for some reason. I think you can create a monster in the extras part. I know you can for druids in the D&D &D Beyond sheet. He, he um, is in the extras, I just can't This guy has to his, roll a saving throw. Rolls. What's a save for Vorn? It's the same as mine, it's a 16. Okay, he passes with the 16. Um, this one is, he's, ma he, he's, one, he's mounted actually with the guy. So he's probably going to, they're gonna run across the tracks back here. So this is what he's gonna do. Um, we're on beast number three. He moves this way. He dashes across the tracks. He probably gets about that far. No, that's his first move. And then he's. Oh, look at that. I was right. To the left, it would have just looped back around to the dinosaurs. <laughs> he's going to dash up to there. That's probably about as far as he gets with the guy on him. Um, Beast, this guy's up. He is has to make a con save. He's touching it. He passes. I'm just rolling really well. He tells probably this creature to follow him, and the other one follows him, like listening to the tamer. Um, this beast is up. He makes another save. He fails, so he goes gagging mode. And hearing the master's call a little bit, they kind of crawl out. Crawls out this way. Um, probably gets to the edge, like right there. Um, beast 5 is up. He is not doing anything. Oh, we lost someone. I'm here. I think she said she had to come back in a second. Now she has an or something. Uh, let's see here. Can't save for this guy. He passes. Um, he is the last one that's freed. He has to move half speed. Um, it's really crowded, but he can't even make it up there, so he can't see it. So again, he's probably going to see where the other ones are scampering off. He'll move over to here. Zen is up. All right. <clears throat> I will be straight up attacking the one in front of me because he spit on me. Okay. And uh, pull up the chart. Just hit it with a short sword. See what it does. It's a fourteen. Does a fourteen hit? Yes, it, it does. does. Right. It does. I have an AC of fourteen. Great, so that's eight damage. 
uh, then with my second, like, with my bonus action, I'm gonna attack Slash again with the short it. sword. Exactly. You know, trying to repeat the same thing that I did, <laughs> you know, trying to deal with them. It's not working out too great, it's another 7 damage, so... Not that yeah. great, but yeah, it's damage. Cut into it a few anyway. times. Um, exactly. Stupid step savvy. Monster 1 is on, so he's mounted on this guy, right? Uh, let me switch him back up. He is here, and he looks back as he's crossing over the bridge, and he sees you guys on the other side of the bridge, and he, like, wants to redirect his mount backwards. Um, Sire is not here. She, like, went AFK for some reason. <laughs> um, he says she'll probably... she had to use the bathroom. Okay, well, um, we'll come back to her turn. I'm going to just back her away a little bit, maybe over here. Um, scratches up. All right, so I'm going to move down to this table. If I were to move down to this position, would I be able to make a melee attack against the chicken? Yeah, for sure. All right, so I do that. I'm going to make a melee spell attack. Shocking grasp. Awesome. Let's see if that hits. Got a pretty good attack roll, I... buddy. That does not hit. It has an AC of 14. That's a 13. Missed so. by one. Unfortunately, you you're, you charge your hands. You begin to rub them together, and you try to reach out and grab at it, and feel the electrical energy try to course through you, and it dodges quickly out of the way as it gets cut by um, Kiz. Yep, I you, move back I, up. Yeah, you uh, provoke yeah. an attack of opportunity, right? Then I don't move back up. Okay. Odo's up. Okay. This guy, all he could stand up from being prone because he had to crawl out of this difficult terrain, right? But he just crawled out. But he's gagging. still alive. He's still alive and kicking. He's at full HP. He did breathe the fire stuff onto you, though. Yeah, well, he's 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 getting getting sorted. You guys are doing great. I think. <laughs> I don't see your HP. It doesn't. It doesn't really doesn't feel like we're doing great. Yeah, I can't see the HP, like but taking so much damage, you know. It's... Oh, I'm doing great. Sucks you have a cleric, right? And I'm I'm using thunderous smite. Yes, uh, using it again, uh, Odo, because didn't you use it last time? Odo, I'm gonna be yeah, a nice yeah. guy. You didn't use it last time, okay? So don't mark it on your spell sheet. You just obliterated the guy before, so you don't need to use the spell slot for that, okay, bud? No, no, uh, no. When I I said I used it last, I didn't hit, so I don't know if that you did hit on the second swing. You did, you did. You hit on the second attack, but it didn't okay. have that much HP. So I'm gonna say you don't have to use your spell slot, buddy. But roll damage with the spell slot damage. Um, when you're attacking a prone target in front of you like this, Odo, you actually roll with advantage, too. To hit with advantage. Uh, I didn't do that, but I hit anyway, so. Minus eight. Plus your smite damage, plus the thunder damage. Right. Roll it up, bud. 2d6. Yeah. Is this like a deadly encounter? Because, damn, we're taking a lot of damage. <laughs> Well, you're doing a lot of damage to them. You guys are doing hundreds of points of damage to them. Jeez. Five. They only have Those like two. 20 HP apiece. Yeah, piece. You, guys are doing you guys are doing great. Oh, Minus yeah. five. This is Tomb of Annihilation, fellas. Embrace the challenge. <laughs> Baby, wait. <laughs> I, 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 still, my, I still think my fart should do fireball damage. Uh, you did a lot it's of damage to Moto that when your first attack. Do you want to do your second attack? Yep. And no, no, no buffs to that one. Because again, I don't want to waste it. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a lot of damage out of it. You already did the thunder damage, so no smite damage, you're saying, if you hit this guy? Yeah, I hit. I, Started I, a little bit more conservative as you hear noise 25. coming down from the other side of the room. Yeah, roll damage, buddy. You might be able to kill it. You strike down with all the might of Tia. Oh, I get to re-roll that one. Yes, you do. This is a case where it'll actually probably help you, buddy. Nine. Nine more. Okay. Chop, chop is, uh, chop them open. Okay, nine is the exact amount of HP mm -hmm. I'd left. You did 22 damage to him, buddy, in that turn. Mm -hmm. It's quite a bit, you know, for a level six guy, right? Um, yeah. You cut into him real bad. You slice him as he breathes fire onto you. But then you hear still hear more yakking of these creatures coming out. 
and you're worried that they're just gonna start breathing fire again onto you, right? Um, Rune is up. I'm gonna fire two arrows at East Eleven, and okay. uh, I'm I'm also gonna release uh, the uh, three points of absorption of fire that I absorbed from the last couple you know, rounds that I think it was. Hold on. Yeah. Let me just let me just roll. What as you, uh, as you see the fire hit its hit its skin that you release through the arrow, you like reimbue your arrow with the magic of fire. You see the wounds sure. begin to heal on the creature. Oh, that's good. At least we know that much. Uh, so I do the first one hit does uh, first one does ah, six, 15 points. It is he still up? Yeah. No, he's not. All right. Then I'll, then I'll do the second arrow into the one in the stinking cloud at disadvantage, is that what you just said? Am I yeah, I mean, this is a thing where I allow it because I don't want to just totally gimp you. It does really make AoE effects like stinking cloud and like fog cloud and things like that very powerful. Now, targeted, um, so how I think about doing it is like targeted um, saving throw effects cannot be cast on the creature. Okay. Because you can't so, see the creature, but you're shooting wildly at it. You know, it's it, so it's first of all it's prone, so that's another two dis, that's another disadvantage stack attacking a creature who's prone, and then it's in the cloud. That's another disadvantage stack, so you roll disadvantage minus two. Okay. So roll it up. Roll disadvantage. Uh, what the hell? Uh, okay, one of the rolls is a one. So one I but it wasn't in combat yeah. with anybody, so you're lucky this time. As you shoot yeah. wildly into it. You're kind of getting worried, though. I mean, look at how many arrows you have left. Uh, I carry an extra quiver, so I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> uh, Mon Monster 5 is up. He's gag. He was actually mounted on the other creature. Right. So he's up here. I only fired six, really uh, six or seven arrows. He's got to be up here with this creature. I'm saying these two guys are probably riding together. Chef is up. How many bloody things are left? Uh, well, there's apparently more. There's like a whole fucking mining operation down here. There were 20 before we started this fight. We've killed a few. Do I see this one? Killed right? a lot. You do see that one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do my chef's spore thing. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to chilling. No, no. Frostbite it. Yeah. Let me make con a con save. Okay. They have a pretty good con save. That's why they've been passing. They're rolling 19. Just rolling well. Darn, you get half damage. Uh, nine. <laughs> Why? No. Oh, nine. I'm sorry. That was plus nine. Oh, plus nine. nine. Minus four. Uh, okay. How dare you understand a little bit of German? Nine. <laughs> nine. Uh, remove, remove your AOE, buddy. How's that? Vaughn is up. Vaughn is eyes right in front of you. The Vorn still, identity. Yeah. He's, still in, yeah. he's still in the stinking front <laughs> too, right? Nine is neun. Neun in German. Neun. Neun. Neun six. So he's going to make a <laughs> nine is no. Yeah, nine. Dinosaur. He has a... It's an My, extra one. Uh, Dino no, it's nuggies. not. That's a... It's a 19 plus his attack mod, so it definitely hits. So it's 2d6. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. All right, so that's seven for his Slam first punch. Slam into it, crunching the dinosaur up against it. You have to roll with disadvantage, Vorn. You're in this elf narrow is, hallway. Elf, okay. is elf, 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 let me check modifier. his modifier. Let me check his modifier real quick, so yeah. that wouldn't hit. Okay, mind. so we'll say that's so. the first attack. Will the next attack with disadvantage? Yeah. We'll do the. We'll actually keep the damage if you hit. Build my it, seven. It, uh, my it's a fifteen, so that hits. Minus seven. Slam as Born slams into him and crunches the creature against it. Now this creature attacks you. It also attacks with disadvantage, right? A mushrooms up. He's just hurt to shit. You know, he's just kind of out of the fight. He kind I, of I, think, I think you should do a suicidal charge. He's, Damn, he's, maybe if Chef <laughs> healed him like he asked, he wouldn't be like that. He actually he's takes saying. a shot with the crossbow through Vorn, though, to try to shoot at him, right? Uh, um, I'll roll it. I'll roll with him, buddy. Don't worry. Here we go. I roll a 19, so it actually hits the creature. And he hits this creature for 5 damage with a crossbow. 
Bam. Almost killing it. Yeah. Wow. Beasts, the beasts are now up. This guy's up, so he makes a con save. As they're just kind of rolling out of this, all this yakking and shit. <laughs> the yakking. Why is beast? Why is beast two and beast five headed off the left? What's the going on with that? Because I fail with this guy. Mounted. I fail with this guy, but he crawls out over some of the rubble here. He probably crawls up to like there. Tries to get it best out of the way. This guy makes a save. I'm gonna say he saves because he's in your effect still. It's kind of one of those situations where you know the AOE is like kind of a buff. Because like should you count over half the model, then Vorn would have disadvantages hacking him, you know. Because he's still covered partly into it. It's not a big deal. I'll make a save with him. I fail, so he starts yakking. <laughs> On Vorn. Starts if a yakking. creature falls prone. If a creature no. falls prone, does that trigger? No. Only standing up. Uh, I roll a d6 with them though to see if his ability resets, and it does. Uh, this guy, so these guys are the mounted guys, and they wanted to return around and try to pot shot maybe a few guys on the bridge. Um, so he moves back here on the bridge. He sees Chef Spore out there. Right? He can't see anybody else though, I think. And he uh, launches a he launches the ball of fire at you like this. Um, uh, what the hell is the range on that thing? That it is, range, though. Let me take. Let me actually measure it out. See if it's within not range. Not as far as you think. It's actually uh, might not hit. So actually, you're right. Thanks for checking me on that, guys. Um, he actually will move up to flank though, across the bridge. So he was, I think he was right here. He was in front of this guy. Let's move him. So he moves 50. Boom. Moves up to there. So now he might be in range. Yeah, no, he's definitely in range now. Well, maybe we'll measure it out. Try to slip him down in here. Um, but like this. And then... He is ju he's in range now to hit you. Chef, make a save. Oh, I tried. Hey, hate you. I do 14 okay, fire damage. Dex save, DC 12. Oh, not 20. Yep, and you gain inspiration, but you still take uh, 14 damage or seven for half. Um, I, I'm gonna take half of seven because for my reaction, I'm gonna absorb element. Okay, cool. I like so that. So half of seven is... Uh, uh, three. Rounded down. Eight. Yeah, three. This guy moves up two. Um, he moves up to here, and he is also mounted, this guy, number five. They're actually going to sprint up here um, to kind of get position on the bridge. This fight's kind of dynamic. Um, beast one is up. This guy was yakking, but now that he's out, he spends half his movement. 25 movement, and he can't see anybody from over there, right? Um, he moves up a little bit to probably here, right? And then maybe he sees Chef from here. I'm going to say yes, he does. Oops, move that over there. 60, so yes. Chef makes another deck save. Oh, uh, Lisa. I'm getting beat up here. Another not twenty. You could actually roll with inspiration too, and you know make sure you really pass the save. But I do roll kind of high in the thing. You take um, twenty-two fire damage. You've already used your reaction, so you t or you take eleven fire damage. I got two not twenties. You're doing awesome, man. If I get one more not twenty, can I get a uh, fire resistance? I'd probably bless you. <laughs> I'd probably give you some temp <laughs> HP for kicking ass so much. No. Uh, how how how's your HP though, Chef? Uh, I have t I have uh, 55 uh, hit points. Yes, but what's your HP currently? Uh, 55. How much? What's your total HP? 55. Yeah, but I just hit you with 11 fire damage plus another seven. Yeah, it's right? Now 55. So you have 55, and what's your total? What's your max HP though? Um. So I had 24, right? You hit me with 11. So yeah, I'm looking it up. So I have 45 current HP plus 10 temporary HP. Yeah. 
So you lose your temp HP first, right? Your temp HP come down. No, I already did the damage, though. I already did the damage. Yeah, I'm looking at your character sheet. I don't see you removing the, the HP, though, right? I did. Okay. First it's one was three. The first one was two. And then the second one was 11. This guy's up. He, he breathes on you again, Chef. This guy's number five, so I did number four. I'm going to move him up to here. Actually, I'm not going to be that cruel. I don't think he can hit you from there. They are following this guy, though through here. This is pretty tight space for them. I probably moved them too far to be technical about it. Zen is up. So, <clears throat> since Beast 8 is still alive and kicking? Yes. Uh, wait, let me actually measure if we can reach that. As Zen's turn comes up, I'm going to evolve the fight a little bit. <clears throat> Let's reveal the so next you... zone. One sec, Zen. Oh, alright. So, I rolled a 3 on the th round 3. I think it's been about 3 rounds. I'm, this is the next room. Um, more of these guys are coming out. This guy, these guys are operating some cranes or something in here. I'm looking a little bit. Zen, you can kind of see them as they kind of are getting organized, I want to say. Um, yes. And I think that's where we'll end the session because I'm going to have to, we'll re-roll initiative, I'm thinking. That's probably what we should do so we can start to stagger <laughs> the initiative. And All there's right. a lot more guys coming. Um, basically, okay. I'm going to... I'll have the rest of the... We basically pulled the dungeon. Right. Hey, who's, got, who's got the healing, man? Why is, no, why is nobody healing? We pulled the whole dungeon. Me, <laughs> but... Nobody yeah. near me needs healing, but... Spore I told you guys, we should have splashed before. water in them. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, I did the math. Um, I took 14 damage with your two fire attacks. So 24 minus 14 equals 10. Yeah, I took a lot of damage. I'd so did I. I mean, I'm not below half already. Uh, that's I mean, the bad thing about. That's, our, that's why I'm an archer. I don't want to get close and get, you know, our, blasted. Our guide is basically begging to be healed, but Sport is like, ah, oh, tidal wave. <laughs> Yo, if my goal is just to do extra damage to these guys because, like, these guys do a yeah, lot of damage. But so we like, don't okay. want our guide to die. He's at 5 HP. <sighs> you know, I think I'm going to have to multi-class as a spellcaster because it seems to me that right. we, don't, we, don't, we don't seem to be using the spells in the right situations for some reason. Anyway, uh, I got to go. So, cool. Uh, you know, I'm going to create a new spell called Fart of Rune. It's going to cause 8d6 damage. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, we'll right. be looking forward to it. We'll be using it. We'll have be... a happy new year, anyway. Have a happy new year. Yeah, you, you yeah. guys all too. Yeah. yeah. Happy new year. All right, happy new year, everyone. I'm sorry for messing. I'm sorry for messing up right there. I was just like, I just wanted to do like an AOE attack, and now if side of wave actually hit, they would all have been prone, so they would actually have disadvantage. So it would have been like advantage stacking right there. They would have been prone either way. Alright, I got I gotta go as well, so I'll see you guys next week. Happy New Year. Well, yep, we guys we're not playing next week, we're playing in two weeks. Oh yeah, true. We'll see you next okay. year. Yeah. See you next year. See you next, but yeah. see you next year though, anyways, buddy. I'll see you soon. See ya.